am your host, the Tedster. I am the dungeon master and the person that goes ahead and runs everything here. Uh, as we are playing the game right now, we have all of our players currently at the Wandering Emporium. Uh, they go. They went to the second layer of hell, and right now they are kind of preparing, intermingling, finding out what's going on and what the scoop is. So, so. Uh, All right, guys. Thorkin, did you take my boots? You gave them to me, and I gave the dagger. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess I don't have boots. these boots then. I will rectify that. <laughs> well, I'm using your boots. They're very useful. I'm glad well, this worked out ahead of time. Exactly. The, it's a premonition. Well, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give you guys a description of uh, what's going on here. Um, you guys have been here for a really a week, and it almost feels like you haven't moved at all. Uh, however, you have been, uh, which is strangely enough. So the places that you've noticed that have been set up is the arms and armor shop which is at the top left hand corner if you're looking at the map you should be able to see my uh my cursor uh you are also also looking at a magical component shop which is up here delectable treats which is at the bottom left where uh, beacon is kind of chilling and then finally we have a pawn shop, which is most, which is the most frequented uh, place or area, which is at the bottom right-hand corner. Now, that pawn shop seems to just simply collect raw materials and goods, and they go through people on the regular. It's almost as if people teleport specifically to drop off their components and goods there, and then they leave. Um, there's been a little bit of uh, perusing today by Degas and Tarek uh, through the roleplay. And we can continue with that, or you guys can do whatever you'd like. Uh, you do notice that, uh, and and you remember hearing Mahadi tell you uh, that when you guys are ready to go out to the, uh, to the second layer of hell, to call out to him and he will come by. Was my astral shard consumed in the creation of my astral gear wheel? No, just like um, just like uh, all of your other items, you focused on this astral shard, and you said, "How the heck do I make this useful?" Because to you, these magical items are almost useless to you, or you feel like you can make them better. And you came up with this creation instead. But you don't dis you don't dismantle right. the item that you uh, examine. All right, sounds good. Hmm. Well, if I were to, oh, I don't know, I, I, on, on the one hand, I could pawn this astral shard. On the other hand, I am remiss to give up anything that could be useful in the future. Hey, Dega. Oh, what? Man, I can hardly Pagan. understand your accent. I'm from <laughs> the south. I can speak slower. That's just perfect for me. I'm from backwater. We speak real slow there. Ooh, interesting. <clears throat> uh, oh, can you oh, carry oh, some oh. some stuff for me, perchance? I can carry a lot of things. And I have a bag, but I'm also very strong. All right. Um, I'm shouting across the ways here. I'm a bit slowed down. Oh, you're over there. What kind of things do you have here? Man, uh, oh, I am... Can I? Oh, I, let me sort by weight. Can I do that? <laughs> no, I cannot. Um. Wait, why do I have a schematic that weighs twenty pounds? I feel like it's probably lighter than that. I'd say definitely just one pound. With me and your construct here, we have some. Right. All right. Um. Capacity so, to carry. man, I'm trying to find, I have all sorts of stuff. Um, I never use my crossbow or my crossbow bolts. I feel like maybe, hmm. maybe I don't need all that. And why does this shield weigh six, this is a schematic that weighs six pounds. 
Just as a Ooh. clarification, any schematic weighs a pound. If it is an out-of-game issue, I will make sure to fix it. Just try to stay in-game if you can, okay? It's just the, it's just the uh, paper. Yeah. If I'm talking like this, I'm in-game. Uh, Barak has strolled up to Thorka and just says to Thorka, he's like, I don't know <clears> where <throat> I was just about, like, 30 seconds ago. It was Dega and it was Tignum, and they were having a conversation across the big little space there, and I was in the middle of it. Uh -huh. and, and I, I don't know what the hell was going on, man. I, I don't <laughs> I ever pretend to you know. Pinch me. I'm just happy food tastes like food again. You know, I'm a, I'm a simple person. Food tastes like wa food, water tastes like water. We're apparently traveling, even though we're still in one spot. I'm I'm ready for anything. <laughs> uh, hey, the guy. What, is it? what what you got there, Tim? Uh, what kind of stuff do you feel like carrying? I got lots of components, which on the one hand, I, I can don't carry like... anything you need. That's my right, main job. On. Um, Beacon is. Very weak, and he has a lot of things that he likes to carry. We've right. left the most of that. I'll, with I'll, the you know carriage. what? I'm gonna come back to this later. I don't want to get too hung up on this. We'll deal with it later. That's okay. But uh, those schematics are interesting. I know how to do some woodworking myself. Oh, that's perfect. I can't do shit with wood, so uh, we'll have to <laughs> collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. You want <clears throat> There was a pawn shop, and they had, you could maybe sell that crossbow or something. Oh, yeah, let's check it out. And you could go over here. Oh, is the entrance on this side? I was just going to let myself in through the window. It's the blue tent. So, Tarek, we're just going to watch them run around? Oh, I'm coming but up to I, you. I, I lean to Thork. I just, just. I'm kind just of entertained listen, by them running around, though. Listen, listen to the conversation i'm telling you you're gonna like warp you're not even gonna know where you're at i'm telling you i'm happy they're happy i would oh, like to approach the pawn shop but it was like a weird the... vortex of the two voices for a little bit i'm telling you the like uh the gentleman uh in the pawn shop tent looks like a uh almost like a demon he's a smaller demon that has red with black spots and he looks at you, and he just kind of gleans at you and says, Yeah? What do you got? Uh, well, what, what, what do you got? I'm kind of interested in what you're selling. Uh, I don't sell anything here. I buy. Uh, do you need some help? This guy, he can exchange I, for Okay, I, see, I, I misunderstood. I think... We might have some kind of a colloquial difference between our conceptions of a pollen shop. No, it's okay. So, uh, let me let me help you out. You look fairly new to this area. So, uh, I'm going to help you. All right. So, uh, I, myself, am a purveyor of magical items. So, I take your magic items and I give you coins. And you take those coins and you that cute little lady over there. And he points over to the uh, to the arms and armor shop. You can go ahead and take those coins and give them to her. And she'll give you whatever you like. Otherwise, if you want to get some fine food, little tasty, tasty treats, and he points over there, you can go ahead and eat something over there. It is completely up to you. If you need some weird and wacky spell components, you can go ahead and, and he points over here, you can go ahead and head over there. Otherwise, you can show me what you have. I'll go ahead and take a look at it, and then we'll figure out what happens. And I'll tell you whether I want it or I don't. But I don't want anything. Are talking about gold coins or some other kind of coins? Uh, I can't I can't use a lot of gold coins down here. If you got uh, my my exchange rate for gold coins, it's 10,000 to 1. So you got 10,000 gold. I'll go ahead and exchange it for a soul coin. I can do that for you real easy. Otherwise, if you don't have 10,000 gold coins... Then you gotta show me. You gotta show me some magic items, so I can break them down. We can go ahead and use them for the stuff. <clears throat> hey, uh, guys, 
You have like five hundred thousand gold coins I can borrow real quick. Uh, I left my purse at home. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I we explain uh, the uh, the the monetary currency to Tignum. That the gold from uh, you know, up on our plane is is really not is worth buckets down here. Alrighty. Well, they deal, uh, they deal in more of the the karmic coins, which are essentially soul. It's a, it's an it's a coin infused with souls. Well, that, uh, that that's the currency. And then this guy so. trades you if you give him a magical item, he'll trade you karmic coins, and then you can use those karmic coins to buy other things that you might right. need. That's you could very use gold. Morose. You could use gold, but you'll need a, a you know a fair amount. And I don't think any of us are packing that. Not even all right, uh, all right, Senor. How do you feel about uh, schematics? Ski, <laughs> ski mat. I've never heard of them, but if you show them to me, I'll go ahead and tell you. I'll show them my blueprint for my uh, armor of enhanced senses. He takes a look at it, and he examines it very, very thoroughly. He's looking at it. Oh. 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 I know someone who would like this. I'll give you two coins for this schematic. Guys, is that a lot? It seems Ooh. like it's a good amount. Ooh, what do you think, Tarek? Based off what he told oh, Tarek, me. Oh, Tarek had spaced out for a second, and he didn't hear what the... Uh, he was just standing there, kind of bored, just like ho-hum, and he, he didn't realize what was going on. What was the deal? I didn't... I didn't. Realize. He said two he'll give me two cents. Schematic. He'll give two. you two coins for the schematic. I I kind of lean into Tignum, and I, and I say, I'm like, you, you got a copy of that. Oh, yeah, I got extra copies of all of them. Oh, okay. All right, very good. Yeah, if you want to sell, that's up to you. It's your it's your creation, and... He said that it's... That's a pretty rare, like, schematic, then. If you I will. mean, that, that that's up to... As far as value goes, I mean, he's just valuing it yeah, as, as he see fits. I mean... Well, I, I mean, honestly, I, I have much... to say, I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm a little bit green in the... In the the workings down here and the exchange rate and uh so i mean i yeah i, I guess it sounds all right well uh you. i yeah, mean you could I ask for I'll... ask for three and see what he says mm. what's the worst you could say is no and then you take the two <clears throat> he doesn't like to haggle yeah i don't want to insult the man you know what two's my lucky number yeah you know what sir i will take the two uh, haunted coins. That sounds great. All right, sounds good. Thank you. And he uh, grabs the schematic from you, and he slams the two coins on the table, and he tells you, "There you go. If you have anything else, please give them to me. Uh, all I want are uh, with those schematics. I can only use one because uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna use that schematic to make that armor. So we'll go ahead and craft that. that. Is the point of a schematic." I so uh, if you have other schematics, I'm certainly interested, but uh, please don't give me duplicates. I will know which one you give me. <laughs> I uh, I lean in to Tignum and just say to him, uh, before you pick up those coins, um, you do have to understand that they are fairly powerful. Um, so just be aware if you pick them up and you're holding on to them, you you may know whether or not it's good for you to hold on them. Wait, are they magic? Kind of period. Yeah, they're very. They contain the energies of the soul. Souls. They're basically souls. Um. If you want to observe, we have. Certain yeah, y'all mind if I everyone. study everyone's coins at some point? I think that it's worth our time. We've not. I've tried to spend some time reading them, but I've been hesitant to touch them myself. Yeah, I don't think. 
I've got lots of magical knickknacks, but um, actually, hold on. Uh, Tignum's going to turn around and draw from his pocket uh, <laughs> seven nuggets of fool's gold. Okay. And show them to the pawn shop fellow. Now, this here is real special. If you show it to someone who's dumb enough, it's enchanted to look like gold. Do you know how many people are stupid enough to fall for that? Plenty in my experience. Aye, there's a lot of people down here that are fall for that. I'll give you a coin for all that. Sounds fantastic. Ah, thank you. And he takes the fool's gold from you and puts another coin on the table, making three. And I think that's all I have to part with for now. Pretty good deal. I want to see some of this uh, fire bleeding over here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm She's... going to kind of stroll over like almost like skipping. Mm-hmm. And, um, Tignum, I'm going to add those coins to your inventory. I know you didn't pick them up yet, but it's so you can read them, okay? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pick them up and turn around and walk towards uh, the magic component shop. Okay, take a look at the item and make sure to see if you're affected or not. Okay. I will. All right, cool. And back to you, Jabu. I'll just come over here and say, how you doing there, lady? <laughs> I'm doing fine, what a nice goblin. Well, thank you very much. That's a very nice thing for you to say to me. I was wondering, uh, I need more money, currency in this place. How would I make by myself some coins of the soul? Well, if you have any magic items, you can trade them in. And, uh... and she points over to where your compatriots are. You can trade the men over there, and then you can come back and uh, spend them any way you wish. I'm working on some of the uh, different things here. I don't run a shop, but she does, and she and she points to the woman right here that's working on the forge. Hmm. So you're trying to tell me there's no other way, huh? Maybe people out back, maybe... I don't know. Gambling for some of them? Yeah, it's, I just serve Mahadi. I don't have any response for what you say. Okay, fair enough. I'll go talk to her then. Thank you very much. Ah, you're welcome. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, what can I do for you? Ah, I was wondering, um, would you happen to have uh, possibly some uh, some way for me to make some kind of soul coins? Uh, I mean, I have a few ways that you can make some soul coins. You can give me, you can give me some things to forge, and I'm I'm always interested in that. Uh, but unfortunately, in the, in this region, it's really a. a trade for trade type of situation i don't know if you notice the people that uh, seem to be constantly coming to this plane but we this tends to be a very very busy and highly trafficked market there's no easy way to gain coins other than to beg or to trade goods for services okay well i have this wand here can i trade it to you uh, you can trade it to the pawner, but uh, I'll take a look at it first. I can tell you if it's worth anything. Okay, I got two. So she takes a look at the wands that you have. What are the wands that you're uh, showing her? Uh, the wand of the war mage. I have one plus one and one to plus three. She says to you, uh, this this one this this uh, weaker one is only going to be worth half a coin, but the stronger one is going to be worth three coins. I would definitely trade in the uh, stronger one if you're if you're looking for the coins. Okay, out of curiosity, have you been hearing about anything about the uh, the deadly sins? I see, we keep seeing you running into them. 
I'm not really allowed to talk about that. Uh, if you want to ask Mahadi, you could uh, ask uh, Ma Mahadi about that. That's the one who uh, did the training, huh? Well, he's the one who runs the entire uh, the entire thing. Oh, I'll, I'll go talk to him there. Uh, thank you very much. Can I have my thing back, please? Yes, yes. Jabu, you can roll an insight check. Jabu, you notice that she came. She when you mentioned the sins, she seemed kind of like she didn't really want to tell you any more. Uh, she seemed kind of spooked in a sense. Well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna nod to her and say okay, and then I'm gonna walk on over to the uh, where my friends are and see if I can trade in this one. All right. Well, listen, if are you okay? You seem a little uneasy there. Uh, I, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. Just go. You can, you can come back when you're, uh, when you're ready. And she just smiles, uh, slowly. Okay, you have a very nice day. I'll be back as soon. Okay. Hey, everybody. How are we all doing? Hey, Jabu. How are we feeling today? I'm doing very good. That's a beautiful thing. Listen, uh, I was asking that lady over there, the one playing with the fire. I asked Ooh. her about the, the, the seven deadly sins. And she seemed all nervous in here. Everyone seemed nervous about the seven deadly sins in this area. I think that's a normal response. Well, it's a normal response because they're powerful. But it's also a normal response for people who are not allowed to talk about it. Especially hmm. with outsiders. Is the pawn shop owner reacting to this conversation? Do I notice that? He seems like he's got... He, he almost has like a... Uh, like his face is just stone cold. So if you wanted to see if he's reacting at all, it would be a high check, but uh, it, you certainly could make a roll for it. He can put the same thing on up here. Neither of you really notice anything that from from what the pawn person is uh, looking uh, or or how he looks. So, so I guess you're, you're asking interesting questions, Jabu. Well, you know, uh, you guys are teaching me that I need to sit back and and not be so impulsive. That's good. There's, See, um, I'm we spoke, to, we spoke to the to the devil. But the god spoke to the, the devil here, but this is the pawn shop. Oh, this this is where I need to go. What do you need to do? I, I got this wand here. I want to sell. This seems like the place to be. Ah, it? it is. Uh, you sir, could I can I trade this wand in for you? Ah, sure. Yeah, I can. I, I'll take it. Yes. Uh, show it to me. All right, it's the uh, plus one, one of the mage. As he takes a look at it, he waves another wand around it, and the bottom of the wand uh, gives gives out like a color. Yeah, I can give you half a coin for this. What the hell am I going to do with half a coin? I need a whole coin. Well, mm -hmm. it's very easy. Uh, if you trade in one more thing, then maybe I can give you a full coin. Hmm. You know, I think I got something that you don't have around here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. But I, let me get my pocket here. I'm going to put a vial of uh, this oil onto the, uh, the countertop. I was like, now you take that. that that's not suntan lotion. You're going to rub it over your body. If you need help, I'll help you. <laughs> well, you rub it on yourself, and that's going to give you more armor. Oh, interesting. He takes a look at it slowly. And moves the wand around it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that strange man in Inverness sells this. Yeah, we could always use it. Uh, I'd certainly be willing to give you a half a coin for this. And we'd make it, uh, make it a whole coin with both. A whole coin. 
Okay. All right, that's seeing pretty good. I was wondering something else while you're putting that all together. I was wondering, could you tell me about maybe the, uh, is there a way I can get more coins in this area? I'm feeling like playing a game or two. Oh, sure. We have a, we have a game of our own. Uh, I have a couple. I I have a couple of different options for you. The first one would be uh, that you can go ahead and go to the Sklargak Pit. I'm not from hell. I don't know what the hell that is. That's okay. So what you do is, and he pulls out a small, uh, almost like a pearl. And it, it seems like clear, but strangely squishy. Uh, almost like uh, it's filled with some sort of liquid. So it's very easy. If you want to help me and uh, help the the area, you know, help the wandering emporium, uh, what I'll ask you to do is, is you take this little little uh, spongy liquid, and it's very simple. You're going to squeeze it as hard as you can, uh, and you must be holding on to whoever it is that you want to bring with you. So if, if I'm assuming all of your friends, uh, you're all, all talking to one another uh, quite cordially. So once you squeeze it once, you will go to the region, and there is something there that I want you to deal with. And then once you deal with it, you can squeeze it again, and you'll come right back. If you do that, I will give you 10 coins. Look at that. My little nest egg is growing. Yeah, you don't have your, you don't have the, well, no one has these coins yet, but I, I just wanted to ask uh, the pawn shop owner, uh, he said something needs to be taken care of, and then that that whole part of it was brushed over very quickly. I, I would have to need a little more information, I think. What yeah, is what's, what's the pit? something? What's the yeah. something? Yeah, that, that, that part was just, you know. <laughs> These my lawyers here. They, 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 they talk all for me. Fun friends. Well, I would, it's, it's very simple. So, uh, simply put, you would you would go to the area uh, that is located in the second circle and you would fight, essentially, or, you know, talk to whatever it is that's there and uh, take care of it with your expedient abilities. And if you fail or if you feel that you can't do it, you can squeeze the ball and come back very simply. If you feel that you can deal with it, then you deal with it accordingly, and then you squeeze the ball and come back. And I don't care what you find there. If you find something nice and spiffy, I don't care. It's taken care of, it's taken care of. But I have the rightful uh, authorization from Mahadi to go ahead and give out uh, any help to go ahead and help the Wandering Emporium, and I feel like this will help the most. So I am offering this to you uh, with your expertise. I have a quick question there. Uh, something else. It, it popped in my head real quick. Like an egg out of a, of a, of a, out of a bird's ass. Could I? Would you happen to have something that can locate creatures? Locate creatures. We don't really have much of a use for anything like that. So no, I can make. I can. Uh, listen. If you're going to be around for a long period of time, I can peruse what people trade in, and I will hold on to something for you like that. But uh, but otherwise, there are demons, there are devils, there are all sorts of scary folk. So I I'm, mean, I'm looking for I'm looking for sins. Perhaps maybe you could scan my my robes here and that man's sword, and get maybe some <laughs> magic off that, and then put it into the little meter. Because we found two, and I need five more. Hmm. You're you're looking to fight the sins. Yeah, I figured we gotta take them down because they're gonna be hunting us. That's part of our engagement with Mahadi. You know, the rumor is is that there is a sin on every every layer of hell. Yes. This is something we've heard from Mahadi. Yes. 
Interesting. So since you were from Mahadi, you're helping us, we're helping you, helping us. Why don't you make something like that for us to help us out? See all the help? Let's just say for a moment that you are probably doing, uh, you're probably on the right track of helping Mahadi and you're you're doing what he is asking. So if that's the case, then then why not why not just help me because i i i wish uh, how can i put this i trust you to find what you're looking for if you help me if you know what i mean okay we help you to help us Parrick's jaw drops when the party found a sentient weapon that was like um possessed by like an angelic spirit and Tignum was like, that is awesome. Um, he likes magical items and like learning about them and stuff. So he's decided that he wants to make his own sentient weapon. I think Tignum forgot that he's not him. muted. Yeah. What? I'm here. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like I'm hearing inside his inner thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. So, this channel. So I, can't, I, can't I love the channel, Ted. This is great. It's got inner monologues and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly how I feel about it. Why can't I access anything? So, <laughs> Hold on, let me fix that. No, so what the hell? Uh, at the pawn store, uh, the clerk. So, I think I understand, you know, who we might find. No. You know, doing this task for you. What I'm curious about, and it seems like that's it's a theme going around here, you can't just tell us who's there. Well, it's, we can just go speak with Mahadi, because he's seemingly being as, as cordial as he can be. Sure, but I'd like to hear it from the Denzins here. Absolutely. I mean, he totally glossed over it again. There was a lot of talking and then got to, you know, more of exactly what or who it is. And then it was just brushed over. Again. Yeah, I, I think we know who we're going to be dealing with when we use that squishy thing. And I'm fine with that. I'm just curious if this is a I'm not allowed to talk about this thing or I'm afraid hmm. thing. Or a little bit of column A, column B. And I'm, it, this is a curiosity. It's not a judgment on any, like, of, you know. You're not able to either. That, that's what I'm, I'm just curious about what the thought process is and what the awareness of it. That's all. Well, I can easily tell you that. I'm not restricted to tell you that uh, there are certain things in my contract that I have with Mahadi that I can't talk about. That was what I was actually assuming. You um, you, you have a disclosure uh, uh, agreement with Mahadi. All of us are contracted with Mahadi here. That's impressive. That is what I was thinking about. That's why uh, uh, why I asked that question. That's fine. Does that's, Mahadi that's fine. have a, a tent of his own? Is this is it the the red one? Uh, Mahadi has a tent of his own. It is the, it is the red one in the back. But uh, if you tend to uh, just call him out, he will, he will, you know, he will come out. But that being said, uh, you all signed a contract, right, to come here? Yeah, we um, did. In fact, he engaged me in a procurement, as it were. Yes, everyone here signed a contract to come here. That's true. I didn't. You. No, you you did. You did sign the contract. Yes, we all signed. I did not a sign a contract to come here. I signed a contract retroactively. That's uh, to come here this sure. this oh, come emporium here specifically. Well, yes, okay. Fine. Was was that something specific about how Mahadi operates, I guess, is that we are bound by contract? Well, everyone everyone here is is bound by contract. That being said, he wouldn't let you here unless you're bound by contract. That's just the way he works. Grab my coin, please. I I am so sorry, sir. He places the coin on the counter for you. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Um, I do think that ten coins is a 
interesting offer. You can buy whatever you'd like. I mean, we have plenty of food and beverage. Tasty. Yummy. Um, I actually have a, I have a proposition for you. Oh, okay. Since we're going to be sitting here and hanging out, and we all realize now we're working for the same guy, it's kind of like we're all hanging out in the same bayou together. You understand what I'm saying, more than me? Sure. I'm very busy all the time, but I, I, I can, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I've been busy ever since I met these, these very nice people. Listen, how about Mahadi? You work for him, correct? Yes, everyone everyone here works for him. I know, I know, I know. So what if maybe we get an advance after after we prove ourselves and get this done and get the 10 soul coins? Maybe perhaps you all can, how do I say this? Um, give us a loan so we have money because we got to pay things out here and do what we got to do. And since we're helping Mahadi, technically we're helping you get rid of these sins. And I know it's that lady way over there. She's scattered in a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. When I mentioned the sins. <laughs> well, that's because you're talking about things that uh, he doesn't really want us to talk about. So we, uh, we can't mention them by name and we can't really talk too much about them. I can help you the best I can, but you know, uh, this is, this is, he, he gives me, he gives me tasks to give to others and this is what he gives me. So I do the best I can with what I have, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, of course, I understand, of course. I'm just trying to say maybe we make some money here. Mister, uh, why, don't, why don't you give us this little ball and then I think I'd be interested in speaking to Mahadi. Alright. So okay, the Turk, you, do you still want to ask him more about, is it, does the contract disclosure cover your curiosity? Yeah, like I said, it was just a, uh, a thought that he, uh, he scratched that itch for me. Mm. I, I'm, I'm, we can continue if we want, if you want to ask Mahadi some questions, but I think, you know, what we're here to do is go after these sins. We have now more, you know, more of a reason, you know, the, the soul coins for, for us is how we're going to survive down here. Um, there's a couple that I, you know, that, you know, I keep for my own purposes that you all know about so i understand we need to gather some more and if we can gather more by fighting these sins that's you know i'm fine with that yeah so, I'm just, but i'll let you I, i'm just saying to you that if we this guy over here can give us a loan so we can get more because like you said we need them to survive right can't you survive on a fall but let's uh let's Get, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I think the first step is going after this sin, and we start this new business relationship. You're right. You're right. Here, you know, um, I'm looking ahead. I should just worry about what's in the water. Well, we I, are. Okay. If you're saying we could just call out from Mahadi, if he's, if he can hear me, Mahadi would like to speak with you. If you can, and he's sort of looking around here. Did you well, Mahadi, 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 drop Mahadi. on my conversation with Bulwark? Well, I'm awfully tired since that last battle we had. Mahadi comes out of his tent, and uh, as he hears his name several times, and steps up uh, to you. Saying it three times works. <laughs> I hope that's not rude. That's, that's why I love Parker. He, he thinks of everything. Ah, what can I do for you today? Well, well, I guess we wanted to check in on the progression of the Emporium's wanderings. And um, we were speaking here with the pawn shop owner about um, sort of the task at, at, the, at the level of hell that we might be at. Is it, um, have we arrived at the next layer? Is that, is that our destination? I, we have arrived at the next layer, but, you know, it does take time for me to get there, you know. Uh, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to be honest with you, and I've been honest with you this entire time, Beacon and Jabu and Tarek. I like talking to Tarek a lot, by the way. Uh, Tarek, anytime you want to come into the tent and chat, you know, you can you can always talk to me. You know, I always appreciate that. Uh, but that being said... As we go closer to the to the layer of hell that has your little your little drink that you need, Thorka, uh, 
you're not going to be strong enough to deal with what's there unless you unless you warm yourself up and get yourself stronger so think of these uh, uh, things that you want to help the other people here is a, a great opportunity for you to strengthen yourself uh, whether it be uh, anything that's here whether it be sins whether it be uh, different training you know you you do you you know I'm here just to I'm here just to uh, observe and reflect and and abide by the contract that we have you get to enjoy the great food you get to relax at the emporium and you get to uh, you get to do everything that you need to do well we definitely contract we know we now know from talking to your pawn shop clerk of the next sin that we may go after him and i'm sure that you and your people here will find plenty of other things that we could keep our ourselves busy uh i can't imagine this place traveling and not needing possibly more protection from other things that maybe aren't too crazy about uh, the work you do, and uh, I'm sure we're all willing to uh, explore that as possibilities of making ourselves stronger. Hmm. Alrighty, I'm sure. I mean, you know, I'm I'm just here to uh, I'm just here to 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 help if anything else. So you know, if you have any questions for me, I can always uh, do the best I can for you. Uh, Jabu, what was the uh, roll for? That was for. Uh, I'm trying to look. I'm trying to look at my the way he stands. See if maybe you have any weight. Uh, uh, you know, coin purse or something. You you don't really notice anything on him. He doesn't seem to really really hold anything with him. Um, that just based off of your passive perception or passive insight, you have a feeling that if he really needed to hide anything, he probably hides it in uh, in in places that are not on his person, like hidden pockets or dimensional pockets. Gotcha. Um, well, I want to look him dead in the eye. We'll walk up, up, up to him. And I guess we'll look up because uh, I'm a very small little thing. I'm going to roll my sleeves up because I'm getting serious. Oh. Okay. Well, yes. What's it? What's yes? What's it? Is it? This is here. You. I know you all smiles and everything. That's fine. I have smiles too. But my friends, we, 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 we taking quite a beating down over here in, in, in hell. And we got a safe book. Now, this whole stupid place runs on stupid soul coins. Is there a way possibly you can give us a loan since we helping you get rid of these sins? Well, I mean, you're just helping my allies who, who you know, are asking you to to help them in, in different ways. So, you know, I mean, I, what I can do for you is, is that instead of whatever offer that he is offering uh, currently, I will give you five more than what he's offering. So, how about that? That's very nice of you. Could you also spread the word to your other um, followers? Because um, I think what Jabu is looking for, too, is more opportunity to earn coins through jobs. I think so what we've learned is that while we are here and have you, we are contractually bound together, all of us together will benefit by our growth and progression so you can we will engage i believe this pawn inventor in this layer of hell and we, we have some meetings of bases to gain along the way um, and maybe i guess in the future we can have some more private conversations about topics that you don't really want spread around publicly as it were well, I assure you, I assure you that everyone here has a job that they need done, but that job is dependent on where we are. 
So we are in the second layer. So I have one person that needs something done. Maybe there'll be more jobs available, the depending on where we go. So you know that is just how it goes. You know. You and that's know really fair. That's fair. Do you know what he sends off? Uh, I don't know offhand. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Are you a man that could find out? Uh, I am a man that could find out. If you if you want to do an insight check against him, you can. Are you lying to me? You believe that he's telling the truth, Jabu. Uh, you, you, you're telling the truth, then. Okay. You look like one of those wise owls that sit up in a tree and just watch the swamp and know all the information. So here's what I want you to do for me. Sure. I'm going to talk to my group, and if we agree to do that job for you, when we return, I would like it very much if you know where the next sin is. I will do you... the best I can to try to find it for you. Well, that's wonderful. I, I appreciate that very much. I think maybe the only outstanding question I have, I don't know how these, we had spoken about some sort of stone and holding hands and something like that. Is that, and um, I just wanted to check about access to and from this place. Ah, ah, so, so if you leave uh, this place, See, the, the clause in the contract states that once you go to Inverness, once you leave the plains, then you cannot come back. But the, the, the clause does not state if you wander around the plains that you can't come back. So if you decide to go to do what you need to do, you're not going to have any issues. And we can use this squish, this ball, and this will turn us back. Yeah, but yes. everybody has to be in contact with each other, correct? Yes, I. So we either all got to be grouped together in, grouped together out. As a, since we're all contractually signed in the same, we're all as a group have the same key to this to this place. That's the word. Uh -huh. No way, Talker, we're going to save your life. We're going to get you out of here. That's just go. Jabu uh, on the head. I know, I know you're gonna work hard to help me, but I gotta keep, I gotta keep you alive too. I got a headache making all these decisions and all these big questions I had to make. Ooh. Well, you're so smart. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Actually, I just realized one more thing. Hey, you sir, I'm very tired from that battle we did in your Coliseum. Is there a way we can rest for a little bit before I go out and do this thing for you? I won't be much good for you out there now at this point in time. Just as an out of game clarification, a week has passed. <laughs> Never mind. I feel great. Let's go. <laughs> Jabu is all of a sudden a, a revitalized as as we're standing there. Just about <laughs> here. I do a flip. Brings to, to life. Um, mm. I, I do ask Mahadi, though. I say. Uh, I said, I, I know our, our friend here behind me at the pawn shop was, you know, danced around the around the questions that we were asking him about the sins. I, I go, you know, do you, can you tell us what sin it is that's here? I can't tell you that. Because there's it's just how strange how they work. So the sins are at focal points at the planes, but they change regularly based on how strong they feel and how strong they are. So we don't know what sin could be here. We just, if they are, they are. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask you. If there was, you know, a central, like, focal point of a certain sin and that these uh these sins would would be driven towards them so i was just trying to get a sense of uh if he happened to know you know 
if, if the clientele coming in and out of, I guess, the Emporium here on this, this particular plane was leaning to a, a certain, a certain uh, tendency, well, whether it be, you know, greed who is no longer around. I could see what yeah, you're... I, listen, I could see what you're looking for, and I understand. It's perfectly fine what you... What you are asking, I just, I just wish I had an answer to make it easy for you. You know what I mean? Hmm. Would you agree? Maybe does it make sense that um, damnation is was maybe more wrathful than this place? I would say the lower that we go, the stronger they will be, and. Um. You know, I, okay. I don't know. You know, it's it's just a strange, it's a strange situation. I don't know. It, the the other thing is, is I I don't know if if what's down there is truly a sin. You know, it, 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 I don't know. I wish I knew more, but I don't know. If you go down there to the ruins and you find a sin that's there, great. But if you don't, then, you know, you, you have to deal with whatever it is that's down there. By deal by deal with, you know, that, that can be obviously taken a number of different ways. But the design is, is that we want it, whatever is there to be gone from that area. And, and that will help to assist the progression of the important. Go I, 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 I don't even think it matters what sin it is, I guess. Yeah, I'd love to know if that if there's something we can prepare for. I mean, really. yeah, I, w I was just curious of, you know, curious of what sin it was to see <laughs> if I was a sinner. And I say <laughs> that with a, with, a, with a devilish smirk. Oh, you are a sinner, but we will talk about that later. <laughs> and my my smile just gets bigger. Well, Jabu, I guess you got your coin. Um, I certainly did. We have. I don't know if there's anything we need in terms of. I mean, we could go if you if you guys wanted to take a stroll, like to see who ju the the armory part. Yeah, or so where's Tig? I'm over too. here by the magic. Yes, Tig. Yeah. You, you have. Is there something? I don't know how this homunculus works. Are you talking to me through it, or is it doing it on its own? No, I'm shouting real loud. The homunculus can't talk. Oh. <laughs> I just mean, is it sentient or is it is it like a familiar? We can oh, I mean, it. it's kind of like a familiar, but Flip has a mind of his own, or maybe my mind has a mind of its own. I, I ain't figured out which yet. All right. Well, he's... Is there something you want to ask about the sword? Is this... Oh no, Flip. Oh, Flip is curious. Likes to play. <laughs> is that's nice? It is. It is interesting. Um, uh. Who is at this magic compendium stall? Um, at that stall, you see underneath the the um, cover that there's somebody there that seems to be peddling spell components. So if you're looking for spell components, they're talking about it. <clears throat> Why, hello there. Hi. What do you need? Uh... What have you got? Well, I pretty much have everything that's needed to uh, cast uh, uh, any third or fourth, uh, you know, level spell in that sense. Depending on what you, uh, depending on what you cast, what you have, I have lots and lots and lots and lots of different, different and interesting components. We have things traded in all the time, and then we grind the the items, and we we get more dust and. And so on and so forth. Oh, I have a oh, jump uh, here. Do you have um, any um, gems? There are some spells that require certain types of gems. And gems, like food gems, like uh, like. <laughs> no crystals, like 
gems. Like, like oh, diamonds. gems. Oh, yeah, gems. Uh, gem. Uh, ah, yes. Oh, I have pretty much everything that you need, gem-wise. Yeah, why? I'm not capable of casting. Like, for example, Revivify has some value of diamond. And so I would be able to buy that sort of diamond from you. Yeah, if you if you need the diamonds, we we have them available. And do you sell with soul coins, or can I buy with gold, or what is it? How does this? How does, how do, what sort of economy do you use? I only use coins. That's what I. That's what's in my contract. I'm sorry, I can't take gold. Hmm. I understand. That's good to know. Yeah, we could we could come up with some sort of value for of gem for a coin. Okay. If, I, if it comes to the point that I need that. Sounds like a plan. What, what's your name? Uh, my name is Dizu. Dizu? But most Dizu? people just call me D. D? Nice to meet you, D. My name is Beacon. Huh? Beacon. Like a light. That's nice. <laughs> That's is, 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 is. Um, Tignum, is there anything... We have some component traits for like Japu to craft gems, but is there anything that you might need in your artificer? Uh, that's what I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking through my bag right now to see what I might be missing. I think, in, I think it's mostly that we can, if it's some sort of raw materials we can exchange here with D. Um, I have I have some spell casting um, focus item that it, as it were. So for other than expensive gems and and the like, it's uh, usually pretty fine. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. You know, it's it's like I said. Uh, you know, it's 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 everything I have here is what I have here. So. As we can wait for Carrick's back in a bit. Um, um, I think that's good for my business. Oh, yeah. Seems that we could try to go after one of these ventures. Is there anything? I know it seems that for your, for your, what you're putting together with your mechanisms, you need a little bit more time beforehand. You're not maybe your source of magics, Tignum. No, I mean, I think some level of improvisation. Hmm. All right. If, do you need, is there anything that you need? And you asked me for oil before, I know. But, and that's, we can take care of that. Is there anything? Yeah, I did need that. Uh, I'm just checking, making sure I have all the necessary components for any of my stuff. In terms of your, your, your magic spells, is that what you mean? I mean, I don't deal with spells so much, but... Hmm. What do you deal with? Well, uh... Generally, I carry around... Uh, it gets very theoretical, but... Hmm. All objects have a sense of being whether or not everyone sees them. And I... Connect with that sense of being and... I see the object behind the object, as it were. Hmm. That's, that is that's an interesting eye. Everything you pick up, there's a difference between what it is and the potential of what it could be. And I sort of lift up my sword and I second sort of think about it for a moment. I think, understand. I think I understand. Some of what you're trying to say. Anyway, I don't think there's much here for me unless, uh, unless I. It's like it's like, it's like when we we had a good couple of weeks when we were preparing to go on this journey, and Mahadi did sort of as a gesture of will to he brought you here, but I mean, you didn't have the prep time that that we did. 
Um, I wanted to, if you need maybe some sort of magic weaponry or armor that would... Really well, my weapon and my armor are both already magic. Is that by your... Like, do you have you infused this magic? My weapon, yes. My armor is made out of a rare alloy. Hmm. That's interesting. I actually have a interesting. I have a boomerang here that we found previously. I don't know if that's if that's a different. It's a hell steel. If that's a alloy you're interested in. Uh, it most certainly is. I ain't never heard of that, but I'd love to study it. Sure. I guess. Tell. I guess I can give him the the hellfire boomerang that we had picked up before. I should ought to add that. But let's uh, I can just do this. Yeah, so it's an interesting material. I'm not really for sure. I'm not, the guy has tried to, I'm not good at using weapons like this, honestly. But it's something that we picked up along the way. Um, um are boomerangs exotic weapons? That's a good question. Uh, let me check. Only if you paint them purple. Very good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about boomerang. <laughs> I already painted it red. It goes faster. What goes faster, sir? They are. I don't know. I thought they were exotic weapons. Simple uh, ranged weapon. It's simple. simple. All right. Well, then I know how to use it. There you go. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I could use it too, but I'm not, I don't really want to touch a hellfire. Uh, and since it's magic, <laughs> I am real good at using it. I actually appreciate this an awful lot. Yeah, this this Tigar has been making. I, I didn't realize that these boots were yours, and he's been making these of your boots. And, and so that's this this boomerang. I think so I saw you using your axe. I might. I mean, you can use your in your artificing in different sort of locations, but um, yeah, maybe I can make something more permanent. We'll find out. But um, I think if we're if you three feel prepared with anything you need to set up with your inventions here, and then that 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 yeah, that's, this is the thing I don't understand. The armor over here. Mahadi says to you, we're, we're always traveling, so, you know, if you're going to go, you know, I would suggest you go soon. Once our artificial friend feels as though his... I'm just going to check real quick. Uh, is there anything that strikes my fancy at a, at a quick glance at the armor? Mm, nothing crazy. I mean, she seems to work on commission. So, essentially, if there's anything that needs to be made, she seems to charge a set of coins to either peruse or make things specifically. And then she will be able to uh, make those things for you within a day or two. Have you got any of those run-of-the-mill sentient weapons laying around? She, uh, she turns to you. Uh, we don't, we don't have anything like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, if I if you wanted me to uh, to I can't even make anything like that. If if you find one, please let me know though. Nope, that's all right. Just curious. Have a beautiful day. Ah, no problem. Bless her heart. I lean to her and I say to her and I kind of I pull my rapier out from its from its sheath a little bit. I said. Keep your eyes out for something along these lines, a little stronger than what I got going on here. And I just nod to her, and then I just walk away. And I say, see you around. Ah, it's no problem. Um, is there anywhere where I could... Oh, wait. I can make my own workshop now. I, I know how to do that. So when we get back... I, I already spent my last week doing something that's going to be a real help, but... I think I'm going to try to make a more permanent solution for my weapon conundrum. 
All right. So, snorkel, is there anything? Just be honest. We could put some. We could put the oil. We could put the gel on. But is there anything you, you need? Or Who's you gonna hold the squishy ball? <laughs> well, I can hold the squishy ball. Um, no, there's nothing here that I need to shop for right now. I think if you're all ready, we should go and figure this well, out. Once we get uh, to our destination and we can see what it looks like, then we can make a better plan. You want that? I'm gonna go ahead and put that gel on. I think. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. And just, yeah, me and Mika will put and, uh, the gel. Thorka will also put a gel on. All right. What the hell's that goop that you're rubbing all over your body? Is like some kind of. Oh, did you not know about it? But. Oh, we should here. Um, yes, this is. I, I spoke to you about this before. This is a gel of protection. This is something that Mills in Inverness sells and makes and Jabu works for him for a time and he now knows how to make them himself. Um so here, give this a try and I give I'll give you one of those. Uh alright. I can uh, do this. Um it takes ten minutes to put on and so it takes this you know we kind of have the gel time. <laughs> but then uh, on. apply directly to the forehead. Well, I right. say, uh, Jabu, why don't why don't you help take them take them out and grease him up so he's he's good to go? <laughs> yeah, the more help you give him, the, the faster we uh, he'll be set up for uh, whatever we're gonna encounter. Flip and Bulwark are gonna help rub me down. Well, Jabu could just be extra help. Oh, I wasn't, I, this I, I wasn't arguing. I was narrating. <laughs> So <laughs> you, uh, it, it shield of faith without concentration. Well, without instructing them, I should say. Yeah, it lasts for 24 hours. 24 hours, and it's a plus 2 to AC. Yeah, Tarek's going to lube up. All right. I mean, we, we just say you do it. I mean, if we don't have to go through the full yeah, minute yeah, yeah. of silence. I, I want yeah. the full 10 minutes of oil rubbing noises. All right. Yeah, that's fine. You know, the immersion is not complete. If not, a full live 10 minutes. <laughs> we, we need immersion. What you get an unseen servant that all it does is apply gel. <laughs> Flip, reach my buttocks. That's like Jabu. Jabu was the uh, helper. I don't know where he's at. Oh, he's here with us. So. All right. So for this ball, we just thought we just need to you know, do the ball, and we're gonna. Yeah, let's let's do this. All right. So uh, once everyone is uh, holding on to each other, including myself. I will squish the ball. Okay. Very red. Very or hot. We're good. Should all see where you are so you magically teleport to an area where it seems to be a ruins of some did, kind. Did Bulwark make it through? He did. I apologize. I'll add him right now. No problem. Just wanted to make sure that wasn't a side effect of the warp. That'd be awful. <laughs> Bad sponge. Eats up the side effect is get fucked. <laughs> and then uh, as north as you can see, right, right next Whoa. to the Right next to the uh, foot of the ruin seems to be a scimitar that is stuck into the ground. I call dibs. Giant woman. Well, we gotta get to it first, guys. <laughs> Alright, I just want to study it real bad. 
Yeah, can we see this this statue plainly? Like, is that? Yeah, yeah. You, the, the everything is lit up from the glow of the lava around you, so you definitely see the statue. You guys are kind of sweating from the heat. It's not overbearing. It's just very hot. Is there some sort? Of, do we reckon? Is there something I can? Is there a tiefling or a devil? Is there something I can do to rec see if I almost have recognized about this statue? I'm assuming we squished the pearl. You guys did, yes. You squished the yeah, pearl. I know you were AFK. Sorry about that. Uh, if you want to make a religion check to see if uh, you understand what that statue is of, definitely feel free. I think it's going to. Uh, There's my religion roll. It's going to be a pr need a pretty high roll. N neither of you really understand it too much. Um, Tignum, you recognize the the ruins just a tad. You feel like the woman was probably very powerful and meant something to the people, seeing as how the statue in general is not damaged, but the ruins around her are. You kind of come to that conclusion. Ed, Thorka would like to use Divine Sense. Okay. And just to get a, a feeling within 60 feet of him about fiends. You smell, yeah. you smell nor hear nor touch any, any fiends within 60 feet of you. I would like to use my broom of flying to cross this here chasm. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I would then like to ferry everyone over one by one. Okay. So you may all, whoever would like to ferry across, you can go ahead and put your marker across the uh, that kind of spot right there. Wait, wait, guys! Don't rush too far ahead. Something seems shady about this. It's, it's too quiet here. Okay, I'll just stay up here. I'm going to keep an eye out while you're bringing everyone over. Um, I would like to make an investigation check to look for anything that looks like it might be rigged or uh, any place where it looks like there could be an ambush. Sure. Uh, Bulwark is going to help me with Flip as well, but... Oh, but they're gonna jump. Well, both of those rolls were kind of lame. So, so just to answer your question on that, the uh, the ruins seem to be a fairly good place for an ambush, but it seems like nobody has been in this area for quite some time. Um, so, I, you probably you're thinking that you probably don't have anything to worry about. All right. Uh, how high is the ceiling in here? Uh, at least 50 feet. All right. Um, I'm going to have Flip fly as high close to the ceiling as he can. And he's going to attempt to hide in the shadows, you know, in any in any crags and recessions in the ceiling. And he's going to fly around and just scout real quick. Okay. How far did you want him to go? Uh, he's going to fly up to about... Um, the shins on the statue before he circles back. Okay. So as he's flying around, um, he doesn't seem to trigger anything. He he takes a good look at everything and sees uh, the landscape and everything like that. He doesn't notice anything in particular. Well, guys, the coast seems clear from here up to the statue, but... There's a lot of places to hide, so I think we should be careful. Yeah, and honestly, any at any moment once we try to make for that, sim and then Thorka puts out his fingers, the scimitar, that seems to what triggers these things to pop out, like they're protecting these artifacts. So hey, did anyone? Yeah, did we get that robe or did it disappear or what? Uh, I, uh, who's wearing I point it? over the job the booze booze wearing, wearing it. it right now. Oh, right. What, what, what's it do? It's the robes of the Arch Magi. 
Just jump in. How are you? Oh, how do you feel? Do you feel all right? I'm feeling pretty strong with them all. Jabu, well, you don't mind, I'd like to just one. study just that strong. later. Okay, you can look at them. Anyway, uh, back to the matter at hand. Um, well, I think here's the, here's what I suggest. I think we should strategically position ourselves, I bearing in mind the fucking should. lava, and then I think I should have Flip go and try to yank on the sword. Hmm. And Ta Tarek is just kind of yells out, or we could leave. Do we have come before then? Other than myself, is it two things? Does anyone else have any resistance against fire? <laughs> uh, give me one second. There's a lot of magma around. <laughs> and I, w I don't know about your homunculus. Every other object that we've seen. Oh, no. Um, magma is much. real bad for things made out of metal. It's true. Well, I could fly and touch Well, my it. homunculus is made Eric out of leather. Magma so is bad for things made out of living flesh as well. It's true. It's true. What do you... What do we want to do? Do we want to try to bring the fight to this... To where we enter? Do we want to... I could fly over there. <laughs> well, I think this looks like a pretty safe spot too, all the way over to the west. Uh, Ted, I'm gonna jump over here. Okay. Did roll anything for that, or just just. Um, a standing jump. What's your strength? I don't think you're making it. Eight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not far, buddy. Uh, do you have an acrobatics roll or anything like that? Jump. Jump. Wait. Wait. I my, strength, my strength is eight, uh, so I, I can have, jump. I can jump eight feet. I have. I have. I can jump one square as well. I can long jump. <laughs> we yeah. have a broom for this. And that's after moving ten feet too. I think. Yeah, that's a running long yeah. jump is a little different, but I can. I have boots that help me run, run jump. I can. Do you want me to just pick you up? Well, I, I, I can jump. I. I, I mean. Do uh if you want to still do it, do an acrobatics check for me. All right. No. Jabu? Oh, that Jabu? can't be good. I burnt my nipples. <laughs> so you start slipping on what you're doing. Um, and you have a plus three in acrobatics. Uh, so so that was oh. a nine. Oh, I gave myself a uh, negative one for some reason. Yeah, uh, so... You're not Thorka. <laughs> so oh, you're right know. here. Um, I need you to make one more acrobatics check to see if you fall into the lava. Boo. You're kind of like slipping. Oh, boy. So you slip into the lava... You scorch yourself really, really, really badly as you as you try to pull yourself back up. Um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Derek just has got his hand and he's just he's just rubbing his temples. Because he, he feels, he feels like the, the headache coming on. So you're going to take half damage. And it's going to be 25 fire damage. You pull yourself back up and then you're able to kind of like jimmy across to the other side. Are you Jabu? It's okay. You... I'm going I'm to be all right. Uh, I'm gonna use some of the oil I I have and apply it to my burnt little skin. <laughs> I am real dumb. And then I would like to drink a drink, please. Okay. I'm gonna drink one of my potions. Peek is gonna come fly over and he's gonna be next to fly down next to you as you're drinking your potion. Shabu, what are you doing over here? <laughs> Um, Ted, is know. that a cave beneath the statue that I see? There seems to be two two crevices that go underneath the uh, area. You can see them. Yeah. All right. Is this is this la is this like a lava flow? I I take it. Is it like flowing? 
it in seems, any particular direction, or is it just kind of stagnant? It seems to be flowing north. So from south to north. Right. I mean, take them. Do you want to fly over there and just take a look? If it goes. Uh, in, like, not just yet. W one sec. One sec. Yeah, Tarek from the back is just yelling. Just remember, past experiences. As soon as we touch that thing or get close, something's gonna appear. So just be aware of your surroundings as far as your mobility. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm just saying that from someone right. who likes to be very mobile. So mm -hmm. everyone, get where you want to be. Uh, I'm gonna send Flip to see if he can see into those caves. Jabu, are you okay? I am now. Now I feel much better. I'm only down six points. I'm feeling much better. It looked worse than it did. <laughs> I mean, it looked pretty bad. <laughs> and and does it look like all these little like parapet walls here and these walkways? Does it look like it was like sort of like a like a castle that has like been swallowed up by this magma, or is it just? I mean, how high are these, like, little parapet walls? Do they provide any type of cover or anything? They don't really provide any cover at all. They, uh, they're they pretty low, almost like they were the base of something at one point in time. Um, okay. they're, they're maybe about two feet high. Um, just, to, just to kind of rotate back to what Flip is seeing, Flip just sees kind of like a... Uh, it's not really a cave that goes too deep. It goes maybe about five feet deep and then stops... Flip is able to see everything inside because of the light from the magma and doesn't really see anything of value inside, just a bunch of uh, rocks and, and nothing much else. All right. Guys, is everyone in position where they want to be? Well, I think about the moment. let's be fair. For and what? And for what? Else, you think, do you think Flip can touch it? I mean, I guess is someone willing I mean, up to touch it? We came here to touch it, right? Yeah, and we came here to fight something. Mm. We just got to figure out the battlefield. We just All right. Here. So uh, I I agree. I think up here is a real good position, potentially, up there on that bridge to the west. I actually agree with you. I think that is a really good spot to put at least our, you know, in-front fighters and our ranged people can put themselves in other places. Uh, but then that bridge allows people to move around. It, it looks like it goes higher. You can see steps. Uh, yeah, I think it, if you can bring us over there, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll ferry someone. I'll ferry whoever wants to go here with my my broom. I'll have it go there and back. I'll yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go. I'll hop on there with. The guy's uh, gonna do a little them. running jump. It gets so confused. With Tarek. Yeah, Tarek is also, he, he touches, um, uh, he reaches around with his hand on his back, and he actually says the command word, and he uses one of his spell uh, raw tattoos and calls his familiar out. All right. When the hell did that happen? Oh, yeah, I've been wanting to ask you about a Paz. He seems interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, are we all set? No, we're. St I'm a heavy toward all. <laughs> so I think I can jump over this uh, part here. Let me do a measure. Gonna, I'm gonna walk across the bridge. Yeah, I can. Okay. Place I can myself across. over here, and uh, Dude. I'm I'm ready where I'm at. I'm totally if you guys wanna walk over, come up on this thing, be able to do. I. At some point when I'm, yeah, I guess I need. I need there's a thirty foot range to be able to bless you. It's, 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 I get to, <coughs> very spread out right now. <laughs> Which is either going to be real good because it means AOE is useless, or real bad because there's going to be high single target damage, and we're going to need to be clustered for healing. Or you could well, get everyone clustered first, cast a spell, and then get in position. That could be also another option. Yeah, we a minute can... for a bless. It takes a minute. I am I not a patient man. Okay. I think if we all go onto this part um, that uh, Pignum brought me, it, 
is enough room to move around, but we're still decently close together for something there, like that. I can, I can fly over there. Come on, see right, can but, but the problem is it really limits our field of view because that statue is huge. We, we need to have lots of angles. Eric, are I'm, you are you able I'm to make worried. it across? I, I, you're I right, Tatum. It. It, it, you're you're correct. I'm just worried about the person on you know the one side that gives us a better angle at things. That whatever we summon here is going to go towards them, and then we're going to be spending a lot of time. All right, so, I think all... that. I think we don't have enough information to make an informed decision yet, and whatever decision we make right now is going to quickly become obsolete the second we find out what we're dealing with. We are just making conjecture right now. Why don't you, uh, how about you help? Uh, yeah, yeah, from the back. Room. I agree. So we, can, you, can we all regroup up here near the caverns? For, yeah. for what? Regroup. You're but, pretty far but, away. Yeah, but why are we regrouping? I think... To gather more information. Um, well, no, I, I don't think... Actually, you know what? I would like to try uh, to get about there with Flip and through Flip attempt to assess this sword and see if I can discern any of its magic through Arcana. Can I, uh, while everyone's getting in position like this, could I have casted a uh, city... I'm sorry, gift of... I'll city. Black city. Black city. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> one. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna cast all four. I'm gonna cast all three of those spells. Okay. Uh, I have an additional plus two to that, but that's still only a twenty. As it checks the sword, nothing seems like it, it's almost as if it's not there. Um, it's trying to detect it, and it's almost as if there's, it's not able to really discern it. All right. Yeah, guys, I think the only way for us to move forward is to just have at it. I think we're wasting daylight. Daylight. If we had daylight in hell, that'd be interesting. Uh, I, I think that's, we're not going to know anything until someone touches it. Jabu, you've been our brave little soul every time, actually. <laughs> but maybe, maybe. Let's grab the sword. Touch it, right? Actually, okay. Jabu's I'll... touched everyone so far. I'll touch it. Have you tried? No, Flip already grabbed it. Why are you jumping over lava? <laughs> um, when Flip tries to grab the sword, nothing seems to happen, and it seems to just go through. All right. Yeah. Now, Jabu, go ahead and try, but please don't die. Could you fly me over? I'm not doing very well on the. On, on yeah, the yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna send the 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 the. Fucking. The beacon broom. can help. The broom. I'm oh, flying yeah, the... over on the broom. Yeah, the the broom. There you go. Beacon, I want to see your sword when we're back, please. Uh, I'm sure that yes, I we can take. I do want to learn what sort of information your eye can. Go All right. On. Try to bend down and grab the dagger. As you bend down to grab the scimitar, something happens. I am shocked and We're bewildered. Dead. We're dead. I'm ready to kill this lustful bitch. <laughs> She's going to take you with the big toe. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a thought token. This beautiful woman steps out from from almost nowhere and says, <sighs> Hello. Why are you here? Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful woman. I, I've, been, I've been practicing for this. <clears throat> Hello, Sherry. How you doing there? I'm doing I'm fine. My broom. Wait to prove. I'll just get that later. Anyway, uh, I was wondering, what are you doing in a place like this, huh? Well, unfortunately, I'm trapped here. That's the. He's going to cast uh, bless onto himself, Jabu, Thorker, and Tigat. 
you just hear her snap her fingers and there seems to be a spell that she casts but jabu you don't really feel any different there doesn't seem to be targeted at you at all All right, well, I asked her her name. <sighs> Most people call me L. Well, everybody call me Jabu. Not, not, not most, everybody. Uh, Jabu, that's very nice. Oh, well, that's... You seem very wonderful. You got the kind of skin that I would... I, I, I like to hold up against me because it looks so soft. How do you get your soft skin? She snaps her fingers again, and, and you can tell that she cast the spell, but obviously not towards you. You don't feel any different. Well, you know, I've been trapped here for a long time, you know, and it's not difficult for me to take care of my skin when uh, when you're trapped here. And you have the same scenery all the time, so, you know, it's just things that you deal with in that sense, you know? No, I understand that very well. This is shit. Why don't you take my hand and we can get out of here together? She snaps her finger one last time, and uh, you you still again you, you feel like uh, she didn't do anything to uh, to to you at all. I wish I could, but I'm I'm stuck here, Jabu. I I don't have a choice in the matter. Uh, I I really hope that you you touched that accidentally. Oh yeah, I was just trying to see. Well, I'm stuck here too. I'm just trying to find out what I'm doing here. But I need that 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 that, that weapon though. <sighs> you hear her just let out a long sigh. Look. Don't get, don't get all sad. I really don't want to fight, but I have I'm I am I have to defend it. I don't have a choice. I've been here a very long time. That is the saddest thing I ever heard in my whole life. A tear actually appears from his eye, and he wipes it real quick. Can we sit and talk for a little while? Why we gotta get all crazy? Because all of your friends look like they're ready for something, and I can see most of them. Nah, you have to forgive us. The last two weapons we got, they were other people. They weren't nice like you. They, they, they tell us they're gonna kill us and threaten us. Wait, you you defeated two two of the of the of someone like me? Well, yeah, but it was our self defense. We didn't want to do it. Oh, I am so grateful. That means that you'll be able to free me from this. Well, well what am I freeing you from? I've been a slave for too long. You're going to free me. Or you're going to die here. And you see her cast the last spell. It is a level 9 spell. Are we arcana check? Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to get scared and say... There's no reason for that, Jeff. And I'm going to try to counter it. Okay. Alright, so that means i got to roll a 19 or better. <laughs> Alright. Yeah! Uh, one sec. Never mind, I thought I had something I could do, but I do not. Continue. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, no. Come on! No, wait! Oh, boy. Give me no. a Fuck you! I have Flesh! No. <laughs> I don't know if Flesh took. Does it work? Blast is not on skill on ability check. <laughs> oh boy. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, amazingly, that's amazingly horrible. Like it'd be better if it would be better if it was just a one. Like, a one is right. got a one, but eighteen, you're one away. Oh. <laughs> Bubble boy. Oh. Okay. So uh she gets the roll advantage. Uh so so as she casts the spell and you start the counter spell, you realize that the counter spell just simply put fizzles and just doesn't work. 
And as the counterspell stops and just doesn't work, you suddenly realize what spell that she was casting. Okay. It was Time Stop. Oh, oh, big one, big boo. Oh. She has the next four turns before you roll initiative. Mm. She first smiles, and she has this big grin on her face. Monsieur, you will be last, because you are so kind. And the first thing that she does... is she steps over here. Oh my god, I can't believe I stood by one. And she just <clears throat> throws out a bolt of lightning <laughs> towards Beacon. Beacon, I need you to roll dexterity saving throw for me. Believe it or not, you still get your saving throws during time stop. Thank God for you. Okay. Uh, but today, you're going to be in pain. Well, the black I got plus four. Nine, ten, <laughs> eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ten. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Um, what's it called? Favorite of the gods. Better try something. I think I can do it. Maybe. Um, boom. Fifteen. That will still not do it. You're going to take 53 Ugh. points of lightning damage. 50 what? 53 points of lightning damage. <laughs> and that's beacon down. <laughs> oh. From there, she just uses her bonus action to laugh. <laughs> I told you not to do this, and you didn't to listen. And she, for her second turn, walks to here. Oh, shit. You did not listen to what I said, and I was very clear. Maybe, maybe you'll listen to me next time. And she's going to cast uh, one at Tarek. Need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me. I, I will uh, inc uncanny dodge for sure. Okay. Well, you, you, you save against it. So you're going to take half and then half again from the uncanny. Hey, Ted. Yes. So this is like time stop plus, right? This is time stop. She has a total of four total turns. Right, but time stop says the spell ends if an action you use or any effects you create affect a creature other than you. That's correct, and she has a special item on her that allows her to do things during time stop. Right, that's what I meant. It's time stop plus. Interesting. So, so how much did I take, Ted? So that goes to 25, and then it goes to 12. So you're going to take 12 damage. That was a nice flip you did there. And I'm like, oh! <laughs> From there, she laughs again. Shoots another lightning bolt. I need you, yeah. Tignum, to make a dexterity um saving throw for me. All right, one sec. Shit. What the hell is this? All right, I will make a deck save first. That's a crit. Perfect. You're only going to take half. I take none thanks to my armor. Cool. Sounds good. So the lightning just gets absorbed into the armor and nothing happens. 
That is the coolest thing that Armor has ever done. <laughs> she looks at you and she says, mm, I'll have to deal with that. And then she, for her bonus action, uh, I'm sorry, for her fourth turn, she grabs Jabu and throws him into the lava. Reaction, can I use Misty Step? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't see why not. No time passes for other creatures. Six squares would be over here. Okay. And she says, Oh, you're smart. You're smart. That's why I like you. And then you see that as she casts her last spell. Now, I need everyone to roll initiative for me. I have to say, this has been really cool so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want another test. Well, that was not cool. Because I'm going with tears up from me. <laughs> <laughs> One, so. Ted, Thorka has an initiative. Wow! Holy, holy. I have a 24. All right. Hey, let's not downplay Thorka's rolling. Yeah, like, I never go above my <laughs> So, I, I think we need to have a little bit of a celebration. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm ready. Okay, no problem. And I'm just putting everybody in. Uh, oh boy. Whose idea was this? I take full credit. Thank you. <laughs> it was that guy over there. Just remember if it works out, it was my idea. <laughs> Alright, Jabu, you're first. Alright, um, I'm gonna take, uh, uh, a potion from, uh, this guy here who's bleeding. I'm gonna take a, a potion, one of his potions out. Okay. I'm gonna feed it to him. Sounds good. Oh, Beacon. Uh, sorry. Um,. Oh my god, that was the biggest forget thing I did. Uh, Beacon actually slid into the lava. Uh, the reason why is because that is a pretty shaky area. Beacon, you have two death saving throws on you for the damage that you take. Jabu, you have to spend the time to get him out of the lava on your turn if you want to give him uh, some some potion. Uh, we'll do the roll for that. Mm basically nothing beacons like a weakling with very few items on him so you can kind of pull him out and just kind of being right. careful with the lava and That's then well yeah and then you can feed him the potion as well basically bonus action to pull him out action to feed him the potion all of that what, okay. what kind of potion have you on beacon being like bag of holding what, no, I, I know, but what, what potion do you have so I can roll it? Uh, here's a greater one. Oh, that's, I'll give you that. I, you get healed for 16. Cool. Alright, Beacon, you're, uh, you're, um, yeah. Go over here. Alright. I'm gonna move over here. Oh. Right, so, right, so he's out of the lava. He's okay. So um, yeah, that's my whole Tucker. All right. Next is L. Yep. L says, <laughs> you, "You know what L is for? Short for? L is short for lust." Well, that's what I felt when I saw you. Now I feel dumb. Why are you going to have to hit my friends like that? That wasn't very nice, lady. 
and she up. she kind of oh, prepares okay. herself. Look, I, I don't I don't want you to be mad, but uh, I want you to understand that I'm just doing what I have to. Then I guess I'm going to have to do the same thing, Chef. So she steps out. And she looks at you and says, You're in the best position that I'd want you to be in, love. Thank you so much. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Woof! Another bolt of lightning streams cast, uh, out. I cast Reflex Spell. You have Reflex Spell? <laughs> no, you do not. I'm looking at it right here. I'm like, hold on a second. Working on that. He was working on that. No, I was like, hold on a second. Downtime. He was working. I was writing a letter to Wizard of Coast right now. I was like, I need to reflect myself now. Create it. It was good. It was a good one. Thank you. I'm gonna try to counter that. I can't wait to meet your cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're gonna be countering that boy. ASAP. All right, so uh, this is a level uh, five. Oh, okay. So I need a fifteen or better. Yeah. Hey. Nice. Nice. As the lightning bolt shrieks out, Beacon, <laughs> you're looking at it like I'm dead. Uh, there's nothing I can do, and you suddenly realize that the bolt itself seems to just curve around you goes right to Jabu and just gets stopped immediately. Ah, tricky. Tricky. Smart, but tricky. And she uh, walks back inside of uh, her her kind of domain. Oh. From there, it is Degas' turn. What's your stance? Are we jumping out or what are we doing? We kill it. So go over there. And Thoric will point, he'll point here. This looks like the safest spot for us to jump over. We have to still, we'll have to. No, my, my, boot, my boots can just, my boots can just get me over there. Oh, dude. Oh, Lumberush. Uh, get there, and now he's doing that. He's gonna be like, "Go get her!" And he's gonna help you, Tarek. Well, uh, he's giving you the help action if he can be around her foot. <laughs> that foot is huge. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how high up the what the line of sights are like. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's 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 gonna be tough. I mean I'll allow it. It's just, it's gonna be yeah. tough. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll come down to like the oh yeah I'll do that. And it's like, I'm gonna like get her. All right, <laughs> are you done with your turn? Timer's up. No, it's not a dick. I can't get it from that distance. <laughs> All right, Thorka, your turn. All right, so uh, Thorka's gonna do what he just told uh, Jaga to do. So I can get I can just run and jump over that right without a roll. Yes. All right, so it's gonna be five, ten. 15, 20, and then I'm assuming this is now rough terrain. To climb. Yep, it's all it's all very rough terrain. Would you say I could at least get like here by this knee? Yeah, yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Okay, so um, I'm there, and with a bonus action with the sword, I speak its um, command word crackle, and it starts to light up. And uh, lightning starts to form around it. And uh, that's All the right. end of my turn. Alright. Tarek, it's your turn. Okay. So, Tarek will, uh, with the boost of speed, he is going to move to here. Oh, come on now. He's going to move to there. 
and with the help of Degas, he is just going to, he's just going to fire a, uh, a crossbow bolt. Sounds good. That will hit. Oh. All right, and with advantage, it should be so twenty points of piercing damage. As the arrow hits her, it doesn't seem to affect her as much. Almost like your skin is much tougher than you expected it to be. Got it. From there, Beacon, it is your turn. Parts of a turn. Um, he's going to try to do a. First, he's going to try to do a guiding bolt as he points his sword towards her and like cast a spell. All right. Fifteen. Probably not going to hit. As the guiding bolt gets closer and closer to the barrier, it just seems to disappear. Oh, okay. Is that interesting? Can I arcana that? Do I get anti magic or something? You'd have yeah, to yeah, take yeah. a yeah. You'd have to take a whole turn to find out. But I mean, you're with your passive insight. You're starting to get the idea that there might be something going on with this that uh, stopped that spell. Okay. In that case, then I'm going to just bonus action and fly back towards Tarek and bonus action healing word myself. Healing word yourself, got it. I wouldn't think you would do it to anybody else, so no sweat. Well, I can twin it, I guess. But I don't know, is anyone else hit by the laser? Tarek dodged. Yeah, I'll twin in healing word the twin to me and Tarek as I fly over. Oh, there. it's a Tarek too, okay. It's also the nine. Alright. Tignum, it is your turn. All right. Um, <laughs> on my turn, I would like to uh, move up as close as I can on that. I, I, I can't. I'm still on my phone, so I need someone to. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. I need someone to move me up as far as I can on my peninsula. And I would like to uh, do a number of things. First, I would like to try to make an arcana check to figure out what the hell is going on with why none of our attacks are working. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's have you do an Arcana check. So, I'll I, help you with that. I did some damage, but just not, you know, what I thought I would normally do based on my previous experience, Craig, right? Yes. Uh, so, you rolled a 17 Arcana, which is definitely enough. Um, I rolled it in, uh, in beyond. So, so uh, with, uh, with that Arcana check, you notice that the, that the dome that seems to be around her seems to be a globe of invulnerability. And you know from your just studying spells and things like that, that that's bad news. Uh, it is going to cause spells and not be able to cast inside of it, um, and to it while it's still happening. All right. Uh, do I know how long they last or no? You don't know offhand just because it's a spell that you're not as familiar with. But, uh, you know, it's probably going to take a long time or at least right. long enough. So I am going to. Um, hmm. I am going to, in that case. Uh, <laughs> I am going to use my bonus action to command uh, Bulwark to give me the help action on my next turn. He, he and Flip are going to move up alongside me, but uh, well, I can't command them both to move, so I, I'm going to command 
uh, Bulwark to move up alongside me, and he's going to give the help action um, for my next turn, because that's all I can do on my turn. Okay, sounds good. All right, so Jabu, it is, you're up. All right. Well, I don't know anything he found out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, all right, we're going to use a, I'm going to use a, two sorcerer points. You get quick and spell. I'm going to use a second slot to cast Blur on myself. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to say that I, I told everyone about that dome, by the way. Am I able to hear that from where I am? Um, I, I let me put it this way. Your passive insight that you saw Beacon cast a spell and it disappeared. Um, you know, Tignum yelling out, It's a glob of invulnerability! And you probably have you probably have enough information there to kind of put two and two together. You know what I mean? Cool. Then what I'll do is, all right. So we cast. All right. All right. We can spell blur is on me now. I, I become all fuzzy, and then I'm going to cast firebolt. But I'm not going to aim at her. I'm going to aim way above her, and I'm going to shoot the statue up here, mm -hmm. and uh, try to break some of it off so it falls down on top of her. Okay. Twenty six in the fireball. That will hit the statue. Roll for damage for me. Uh four. Alright, we're gonna roll fifty fifty to see which way the the uh which way the statue breaks. Oh no. I need Daga and Thorka to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Okay. Uh, Daga, you get a plus three. Nineteen. Uh, ten. What is this? So. Thorka, you're hit with nine points of uh, of uh, a bludgeoning damage as a piece of the stone just kind of collapses down. Uh, Daga, you get out of the way. You can go in uh, in one of three cardinal directions to go ahead and get out of the way of where the stone is. Okay. I would say it's now rough terrain, but it's. It was rough terrain before, and Lust just seems to be laughing. <laughs> that makes Jabu really mad. He, he hates being laughed at, so that puts him to another level. All right. Oh boy. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. All right. So from there. Just give me one second. <laughs> group hug! God! Get them tighter for the picture. <laughs> Don't tell them my secrets. Come on. Some sort of indie era. Don't tell them my death secrets. I was the only one there. Right, give me one second. Let me just see and measure this out. Make sure it works properly. Which uh... just think of how bad did those I, first did, four did, time stop turns would have been if we were all grouped up. Did I uh, get? I got healing, but I don't know how much. Right? You got nine. Yeah, they they are, they tried to respond to you. Yeah, nine or something. Okay. Lust uh, seems a misty step to here. And uh, she goes, Ah, you're all so nice to stay here with me. Let me show you how nice I am. And she proceeds to cast a blast of cold air that erupts from her hands. I need... Oh, it's a 60 foot... Well, it's, it's a lot bigger than that. Uh, just imagine a lot bigger than that. Uh, and you need to make a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, both of us? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, that, that's a bit different. Yeah, it's something like that. <laughs> so, uh, I was like, that was color spray cone. Yeah, it imagine it's a cone of cold. Um, both of you unfortunately fail. And you're both going to take 33 points of cold damage. From there, she just walks back into her into her area. But she seems to have this smile to her that Thorka is really making you annoyed. And Daga, the Degas same if opportunity with his tattoo. Uh, the tattoo is something that you have to activate, so no. If it was a regular mm -hmm. weapon, okay. yeah. If it was a regular weapon, it'd be a different story. Uh, speaking of which, though, Daga, it is your turn. Over towards the foot. I think that's what you're doing. Yes, and from there he's going to. Again, I guess that's half of that thing is. Tarek's got the good brains. He's going to help out Tarek. He's going to grab her. And he unleashes his coiling grasp tentacles. DC 14. Strength save for good. All right. It's gonna pass through it. Lust says to you as you as the tentacles get close to her, leave those filthy things alone, Daga. And then from there it is Thorka's turn. Okay, he's gonna move three. next to that's as close as he can get well actually no he's gonna stay here and he is uh i'm gonna use lay on hands on myself all right and uh, that's uh, my turn all right From there, Tarek, it is your turn. All right, Tarek, uh, seeing that he's going to get some aid from Dega, he's going to move one, two. Here, and he is just going to, uh, he's just going to fire another crossbow bolt, see what happens. Okay. 19. That will hit. Twenty-four. All right. As the crossbow bolt hits, again, the uh, bolt seems to do some damage, but not nearly as much as you would expect it to do. Why you have to shoot me with that, silly? That is not nice at all. Of course not, dearie. Of course it isn't nice. But you're not being nice to us, either. From there, uh, Beacon, it is your turn. You're muted, Beacon. Oh, thank you. I was talking, sorry. Um, so I'm flying up and I'm going to bless. One, one, I get 
stalker in range. So I'm going to bless stalker, take uh, take them, and Jabu. And then I'm going to cast another healing word on myself as I fly over here behind Jabu. All right, sounds good. All right, so that's beacon. He's going to switch over flying above where Jabu is. Or not, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Tignum, it is your turn. All right. So, uh, let's see how you like this, you hag. I am going to draw my hand axe. And I have advantage from Bulwark and a plus a d4 from Bless. And I'm going to hurl it at her face. All right. Um... And, uh, I don't think my new item affects it because it's not a spell attack, so. Yeah, it's only spell attacks. It's It should do it automatically for you, so. All right. I am, uh, just, just getting back, and so uh, if someone wants to roll that first attack for me real quick, that'd be great. So it's, it's with All advantage right. plus a d4. All right, let's take a look. All right, it hits. It makes its mark. All right, so that's the magical slashing damage. I don't remember. I think it's D6 plus whatever. Yep, 1D6 plus 5. It's 8 damage. As the weapon uh, goes ahead and and flies through the air, the damage seems to hit her. And uh, Tarek, you've been you've been really noticing and trying to trying to watch her. Uh, Daga and Tignam also notices the uh, weapon does seem to do as much as it normally would. <laughs> That's what I thought, you bitch. I'm gonna throw it again. All right. So this one will be just a regular. Yeah, so I don't have advantage, but I still have the bless, I think. Yeah. Okay. Even with the attack and the bless, the weapon just simply misses. And she smirks and says, <laughs> you're going to pay for that. And then the weapon right, comes back so, to you. Yep, yeah, the weapon will come back to me. And one second, let me just switch back to the, my correct monitor. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, wait, where the fuck is she? She's about at the feet. Oh, she's underneath that explosion effect, and I can't see her anymore on my screen for some reason. That's okay. Um... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Well, that sucks. Um, I am going to use my bonus action to... Um, I, I guess uh, just have uh, Flip Flat behind me this time and help me. Okay. All right, Jabu, it is your turn. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast uh, Dispel Magic on her barrier. Oh, okay. Um, the what level, what's the rules on that Dispel Magic? Spell magic is works just like counter spell. Let me just double check. For each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. The DC equals ten plus the spell's level. All right, so you are going to have to roll. Um, it is a sixth level spell, the globe. So you have to beat a sixteen. Oh, yeah. All right, so it works like counter spell. Okay. Yep. Right. You have blessed too, or uh, or you can't use that for that. Is, he, is it a, a 
abilities. Oh, plus there's an ability check. This is oh, also no, this was the same thing my okay, wife did before. Well, cool. All right, well, here we go. Attack rolls and saving throws. <sighs> oh, no. All right, well. Um, Good try. That's it and done. I will go ahead then. And I'm going to sacrifice uh, a level two slot. Great idea, though. To give myself uh, three sorcerer points. Bring me up to. Oh no, that'd be too many. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll sacrifice a level one slot. Okay. That'll bring me to six. And then I'm going to sacrifice a six slot to give me back another level three slot. Okay. And I'm going to move. To here. Mm -hmm. And I am done. All right. It is Lust's turn. She is going to uh, move up a tad. And then she is going to Misty Step. <clears throat> Well, I said to you boys that uh, I was going to teach you a lesson, and I feel like uh, the lesson is time. She's going to cast Cone of Cold. I need Tignum, Bulwark, Flip, and Tarek to make a constitution saving throw for me. Yeah, she just on my range. Alright, one sec. I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna un stuff. uncanny dodge. But constitution saving throw. Yep. Alright, roll 20. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, there you go. There it is. There you go. Alright, well, there's mine. Hold on, let me get the rest. Bulwark will take half, and Tarek will take half. Everyone else will take full. All right. Um, I am going Can to I do un something. Uncanny dodge that. Yeah, yeah, Tarek, you're going to take half, and then you're going to take half again with uncanny dodge. Uh, Tignum, let me know what you're going to do. I'm just waiting to roll the 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 damage die. Yep. Um. I am going to activate my. Oh, no, I can't do both things because this hit both of us at the same time. I am going to cast Absorb Elements. Okay. And I believe that makes it halved, right? Yeah, so I'll take half instead of full. Sounds good. So it is going to be for Tarek, uh, half of 35... 15, 16, 17, and then half of 17 is 13. So, Tarek, you're going to take 13 damage. Uh, the the flip is going to take 35 damage. Um, the, the steel defender is going to take 17 damage. And Tignum, you will take 17 damage. All right. Now, what did I take? I think was, well, I end up taking like nine. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. So was, no, that's I think it's less than that. I'm, I apologize. Eight. It's eight damage, Tarek. Okay. All right. Um. I if I got my math right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know where my brain was at for a second. Um, when Flip gets hit with that cold damage the the homunculus seems to freeze solid and seems to be sitting there frozen solid all right i'll put him back then 
Okay. Yeah, completely frozen solid. Um, the it did take the damage. It was killed, uh, but becomes a frozen statue until the statue thaws. Um, from there, Daga, it's your turn. Well, he gets up close to lust. And he's gonna this time. He's you know, he's gonna keep helping out to got our Tarek. See them on the on the crop uh, crop in there. He's gonna try for a hook attack this time. Okay. Grab on. Oof. Yeah, two. Yep, that hits. I wonder if that is. I uh, don't get to these. Another. 3d6. So a total of 20 piercing damage as he hooks onto us. And she's like, I got her! <laughs> um, now she's grappled. And she looks just annoyed as you grapple her. Alright, that's his turn. Thorka, it's your turn. Okay. I think this is as far as I can kind of get here. One moment. I'd like to I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use a bonus action to activate my challenge divinity peerless athlete that gives me uh, advantage on athletics acrobatics uh, carry push all that good stuff it, it pretty much Thorco channels the energy of the gods and swells his muscle up to peak conditioning, and he is going to try to jump over um, to this kind of island here. Okay, no problem. Where are you, where are you targeting, right here? Uh, yeah, I guess, as, can he fit behind her? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a narrow fit, but it's fine. Okay, so, would that be athletics? That would be athletics or uh, acrobatics. Okay. That'll make it. You just narrowly jump over and make it onto the edge in one piece. Now that is your that the only downside is that's your action. Yeah, that's all I can do. I, and I don't think I have any more movement to like move to a better spot than that. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, uh that's my turn. All right, Tarek, it's your turn. Tarek, please don't block my path to her. Okay, uh... Tarek, as soon as he figures out how Roll20 works, he's going to <laughs> use the Boots of Speed, and he's just going to slide back to here, if he can. He's really having some problems here. Um, and I'm then just gonna, I'm just gonna turn around and then just, I'm just gonna shoot my crossbow bolt at her again. Okay. Now that she's out of her little, uh, hole there. Ooh. That just barely misses. Almost hits to God. Stagah oh. has her grappled. Uh, he has an advantage because Stagah's helping. Oh, yes. Actually, only only doesn't have advantage because Tarek moved back and is not within 30 feet. 
So it has, does the, is the help? I, I will at the I same did. time, I, I will have a Paz do the, the swoop in and uh, fly by out help action. All right, then you got it. Let's see, let's see what you got here. Uh, this will kill me later, but fuck it. <laughs> hey, that nice. hits. Shot, nice shot. And she's too busy being grappled to, to attack a pause with anything, so. So it'll take 25. Now, do I do I see that that did, uh, you know, more a little more damage now that she's out of her little bubble there? Surprisingly to you, it's, she seems to still be taking less damage from you. Okay. All Come get right. my boomerang. <laughs> Beacon, it's your turn. All right. Beacon got to try an interesting spell. Beacon's almost off the map. He's, I know, because he can fly away pretty far. So he's got to fly up over here, and he's going to point the sword at her and cast Repelling Blast. Um, two, two beams. So there's a 27 to hit for the first one. Oh, yeah, it still does four shots. That's eight um, radiant damage from the first crackling beam. And then the second beam does another eight radiant damage. So the second, the second attack will not hit. The first attack, she is going to counterspell. Uh... Well, it's it's all the same. Oh, then she just counterspells the whole thing. Yeah, it just counterspelled. Okay. So um, she snaps her fingers, and your spell seems to just disappear. All right. Oh. So he's going to then like wave his hand and do, use his healing light to help out to Gar and heal the Gar as a bonus action for two D six. Gonna heal the Gar. All right. Eight to Tagaz. All right, Tagaz healed for eight. All right, he's going to fly over here and do some sort of spell. Yes, sorry, that's big start. Tignum, it's your turn. All right, at the beginning of my turn, I am going to activate the chronometer. All right. One moment while I find it. Uh, wait, what? Hold on. Four. Okay, hold on. What's that do? On a four to six, I go forward in time to warn myself of what is to come. The next time I fail a saving throw, attack roll, or ability check, I can re-roll the check to take either result. Well, that's not what I wanted, but I'll take it. Um. <laughs> and let's make sure it works. Uh, it seems to act weirdly, but it does work. Uh-oh. Well, we'll have to check on that later. Um, <laughs> right, well, I will move... Ooh. Shit. I'll move forward, and I will attack. Hold on, i got to move to here. Um, I'm going to attack with um, um, uh, my hand axe. That's going to hit. hit. Yep. All right, and that will do an additional D6 uh, lightning damage from Absorb Elements. All right, sounds good. Ooh, the full six. And I will use my bonus action to also use Branding Smite. Tignum's real pissed off about what happened to Flip. Makes sense to me. Uh, so that's nine Radiant. 
And then I'm going to activate my um, my new item to get an additional bonus action to command Bulwark. And Bulwark will run up, and he will Bulwark smash her. Okay. I have to remember what... Uh, I can't remember what his fucking attack roll is, because it's not what it says in D&D Beyond. Oh, it's my spell attack. Yeah, it's your spell modifier. Well, that was garbage. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it did not that's hit. All right. all right, that's my turn. All right, Jabu, it is your turn. All right. Uh, from here, I'm gonna. Oh wait, let me just keep checking my blur. Sorry. Gonna write that down real quick. Uh, that's, that's round three. Um, we're gonna cast uh, Scorching Ray at her. I have some really weird cone of blue stuff coming off of my figure. Does that anyone see that? No, I don't see it at all. You look fine. Mm. Okay, that's weird. I can't see half the map. You can re you can thing. reload. Yeah, uh, do your scorching ray. Sorry, I had to move closer. I just, I just read that. I'm gonna use a sorcerer point, my last one, and I'm gonna change it from fire to uh, lightning. I don't know if it matters. Okay. Uh, so each each blast will be lightning. Sounds good. First one will that? definitely hit. That other one's a 2d10. I don't know why it does that. All right, so 31, 28, 21. Uh, all three will hit. Uh, Tignum, you removed your uh, pieces. Give me 27 lightning damage. Okay. He's having some, apparently looks like probably roll 20 issues. All right, no problem. I, t I just re-added them. Take them. Get out of it and reboot. Or not reboot, but reconnect. Yeah, I tried refreshing. I'll try it again. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I see what you're, what you're looking at. Um... Give me a sec. Oh, okay. I reconnected and it's gone. Cool. Good. All right. So, um, just as a clarifier, Jabu, uh, the damage actually happened. The spell made its mark, which uh, you're pretty happy about because uh, the spells didn't seem to be working before. Oh, so lightning did work. Okay. Good enough. So 27 lightning damage. Yep. Is there anything else that you're doing on your turn? Uh, bonus action. I'm going to sacrifice my last, uh, well, not my last, but a little free slot to give myself two sorcerer points. Oh, shit. I forgot to make my second attack with multi-attack. Okay. Make your second attack now while we're, while we're shifting over. And that is going to be a miss. What's All right, didn't matter anyway. <laughs> All right, at the end of your turn, Jabu, you see Lust, and she uses a legendary action, and her eyes turn a gold. You're actually pretty worried about what may happen. Oh, sorry, the next time I fail an attack roll with the chronometer, whatever, I, I have to reroll it. Okay. As she is grappled, she takes her hand, and and that's going to be a 13 is a miss. Yeah, I figured. I'm going to scream, uh, I'm gonna scream out and uh, beg her to stop. She yells to you, Jabu, and says, You caused this. And slams her hand into the ground. All of you suddenly realize what's actually happening. And you feel 
a thunderous wave of force that sweeps out from her. Everyone that's around her must make a constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Fuck. Uh, I think I roll... This is a spell, right? This is a spell, yes. So I roll normal. Okay. Okay. I got... I got, uh... Alright, so what I can do is I can help out, uh... I'm gonna help out, uh... Tigum? No, I can't. He's too far away. I can help out, uh, Tiga. From my, from my, my distance, and uh, I can use a move called uh, Restore Balance, and I can take away his ability to be, for that to happen at this event. Okay. So, the then the... Yeah, so you don't roll this event, you just keep the, uh, you just keep the 18. Okay. Everyone but Thorka is going to fail. Oh, I tried, man. All of you suddenly realize what she's doing, and she just has this cynical smile on her face as she does it. Because the shock doesn't even feel painful, but you suddenly feel that you're being pushed away. And all of you are pushed away from her. Oh my god. How far? It's ten Head feet. Do I pull her with me? No. Because grapple works in the fact that if you're pushed away, the grapple ends. Okay, it's like a plus push. Alright. Well, still within the reach of the Am I able to utter the command word for my broom as a reaction? You wouldn't be able to do that, unfortunately. Alrighty. Holy crap, so 2d8 plus all that damage. So, all of you will take, uh, that failed, takes 12 points of lightning damage, or thunder damage, rather. And all of you hear the thunderous boom. It's audible out to 300 feet. Daga is going to take 45 points of damage from the lava. He's down. Bulwark is melting like they do in uh, Terminator 2. Tignum takes 55 damage. When she turns back around and looks at you, Thorka, she says, ha, one of the lucky ones. Daga goes. He has to roll death saving throw and takes two death saving throws from taking lava damage. I'm not rolling the damage because... Daga starts to melt the shell from his back starts to melt and he is melting into the lava perished thorka it is your turn uh -oh. Thorka, I can't hear you if you're talking. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, my, I thought my finger was on the push to talk button. So, seeing the god just start melting away in the lava, uh, I, I guess looking past her, uh, how, like,
I mean, Tignum's in in the lava. Does it look like I can reach him? You think that if you run past Lust, that you'll probably be able to reach him from the ledge. Um, that's definitely a possibility. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, run past her. I'll, you know, take the attack of opportunity to just try to um, reach over to grab the pull Tignum um, up. All right, just need an athletics check for me. Tignum is carrying oh. a lot of shit. Okay, that's fair. 145 pounds of uh, of ingenuity. 22. But with a 22, you pull that ingenuity out of the lava in one piece. He's still pretty scorched. Uh, okay, that's uh, all I can do. So they use my action. All right. The good news, uh, Tignum. By not being in a lava, you're not taking damage. You're just dealing with death saving throws. If you don't get healed. If you get healed, then it doesn't matter. Uh, Tarek, it is your turn. Okay, Tarek is just going to... Uh, he communicates with a Paz. A Paz is going to just do the... Uh, he's going to do the flyby help action. And Tarek is just going to fire a crossbow. Okay. At the, uh, at the lovely. Build hmm. 27, I assume, hits. That does hit. Oh, it'll take, uh, 19. And then the paths will fly back to one, two, three, four, five, six to here. And I will take a, I will move, uh, <laughs> I will move to here. Because that will make the difference. Okay. Uh, Beacon, just to explain to you what happened, when it becomes somebody's turn, uh, when it was Degas' turn, the lava deals damage if at the end of the turn if you were unable to get out of it. So, And that's how, that's how rules is written is. So since Degas was unable to get out of the lava, it took damage from the oh, lava, so it takes two saving throws. Lava. Then he then rolls the death saving throw for the last time. one, and then that's the third death saving throw. Um, because it it's not Tignum's turn until last, which is obviously really strange how it works uh, with lava. lava damage? He doesn't take any extra lava damage until it's the end of his turn while he's in lava. Tignum was pulled up from Thorka, so technically right now Tignum's not going to take any extra damage unless he's in the lava at the end of his turn when it goes. So there you go. Uh, speaking of which, Beacon, it is your turn. Twenty one for an Eldritch Blast. That will hit. It's two force damage and I'll knock her back ten feet. Okay. Second beam. Sixteen is a hit. That will miss. Alright, I'm going to quicken a second Eldritch Blast. I'll do another one. Right. And that would be so that is six force damage and push her back another ten feet. As she's pushed back, she's pushed back into the lava. We're going to cast a second spray and crit fail that way. While she's in the lava, you notice that the lava seems to deal damage to her, but not nearly as much as you would expect it to. That was the damage that she took from the lava. Oh. Wow. But she didn't take that full amount. 
it doesn't seem to sear her skin as bad as you saw Daga and Tignum. But it was a good play because it definitely dealt damage. From Beacon, we go to Tignum. Uh, Bulwark takes two saving throws and then it must make a death saving throw for the third. It saves. It is still alive. Uh, Tignum, you must make a death saving throw, but you don't take an automatic two because you're not in the lava. Uh, except you take two when you roll a one. So there it is. I tried. Uh, Jabu, it is your turn. Oh, boy. Um, I can't even get over there. Oh, it's funny. Yep. All right. Well, she's uh, that far away. Uh, I'm gonna cast uh, fireball since so she's not clear, everybody. All right. Add uh, fire to the fire. Well, I'm gonna uh, use another sorcery point, which will transform that into lightning damage rather than fire damage. Okay. And you all see this gigantic ball of electricity that just sails over where Degas was, sails over Beacon, and lands right where Lust is located. She needs to beat uh, a 19 to take half. Deck saving throw. <laughs> That's going to be tough. No. All right, takes 425 lightning. Takes 25. So you can just see the sparks that are coming off of her, and she just seems angry. Uh, bonus action I'm going to sacrifice a level one slot to give myself two more sorcerer points, and my turn is over. As a special action, she speaks out I love this. I am rejuvenated from this. It feels so good. She then is a legendary action. You could see her eyes start to glow again. This gold. On her turn, she notices that she is on the lava. Very annoyed, she misty steps here. She looks at Thorka and says, Are you ready for round two? Do you think you're going to be lucky again? Oh, just go for it. She slams her hand into the ground again for a thunder wave. Beacon, are you on the ground right now? Um, yes, I'm standing in front of Daga. Okay. Daga is going to automatically be pushed back. Um, at least the body. Not that that matters as much. It should matter. Uh, that's, that's fair. It doesn't matter. Um, Beacon, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Thorka, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Both at disadvantage, if possible. Um... Tignum also makes a constitution saving throw. Tignum gets a plus three. All right. And and he also gets the no disadvantage because my, my aura is... Sounds Rope good. Roll normal, uh, uh, Tignum. <laughs> oh, and uh, D4 for Bless. So that's 19 for Thorka. I got to see where Tignum's bless roll is in order for me to see. Tignum, you unconscious just barely beat it. Thorka, you also beat it. But Beacon, you are pushed back. 10 feet. 
as you are pushed back, since you are on the ground, I you're gonna. Cover. I don't know how that's how that works out. So let me just look it up really quick. It has to like if you don't, if your fly speed goes to zero and you're flying and you don't have hover, then you plummet because I can hover, even though this isn't about changing my speed. I guess that's about change. You don't discreetly change between are you flying or like which speed you're using. It's if you're swimming or low. Wow. Wait, can I just be horizontal because I have wings? The hover subtype simply adds the rule if knocked prone, they do not fall. It's so let me look. Push back and not falling down. Um, I'm going to rule it that it does put you in the lava. And the reason why, and the only reason why, is because you're not, you're on the ground right now. Uh, your feet are on the ground. If you were 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet above, when you get pushed back 10 feet, you're still in the air because you're able to hover. And you don't plummet because you have hovering. But when you get pushed back, you're not hovering above the lava. The lava is at the same instance as where she's standing. The lava is like a foot, maybe a foot or two at the same elevation as the ground. It's It would be hard for me to, to like... It takes an action to turn my wings on or off. Gotcha. So it's a it's a weird it's a weird one. How do you want to call it? Uh, that being said, you still get to make a dexterity saving throw, and the reason yeah, why I'll okay. yeah the reason why I'll give that. Yeah. Still throw. Okay. And you're gonna take less because you have your wings out. You're trying to soften the blow. So you're going to take 32 points of fire damage. Have some of your wings, your feet, some of that gets onto the lava. I'm sorry, how, many, how much fire damage? 32. So I have 16 fire, fire resistance. Awesome. So, from there, uh, it is Degas' turn. Uh, his body is currently melting. Okay. Uh, Thorka, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'll look over, and I see that uh, Beacon is not, like, in the lava. His wings are... I am in the lava. Yeah, I, I know you're in the lava, but you're, you know, you're not, like, in, in the lava. Because you're kind of above it. Away. I am a... He means you're not dead. Like yeah, you, you don't dead. need to be. You don't need to be. Uh, uh, yeah, you don't need to be rescued. Yeah, you'll be able to move on your turn. And uh, I look over to Beacon, and I said, "Get out of that! Can you get out of there?" All right. Well. I'm going to, here's the thing, it's just kind of staying here and fighting or getting Tignum out of this area because she keeps thunder waving us. I don't want him just to fall in there. Alright, I'm making an executive decision. I'm grabbing uh, Tignum and I'll take a pack of opportunity and I'm gonna um, carry him, try to get him out of here. 
Okay. She doesn't have any weapons in her hand, so she's not going to take an attack of opportunity. All right. I'm going to... All right. So... All right, Ted, you're going to have to help me with this. So I want to bring him over here, right? Can I... Because I'm still with my... Um... You know, my, my enhanced stuff from the gods. Can I, like, hurl Tignum over here? Like, uh, <laughs> you can, but he's going to take damage. Can I hold him and jump over? You definitely can. He would okay, not so take I'm damage gonna... in that sense. I would just okay. need you to make an athletics check in order to be able to do it. No problem. Basically, anything but a natural right. one will be fine. But you're jumping over a pit of lava. So, a natural one, perfect. So, you're good. All right. So, yeah. So, I just piggyback. I have him over my shoulders and just jump over with yep. him. And uh, I guess end my turn here because I, I think that's enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's, uh, that's my turn. Tarek, it is your turn. All right, Tarek is going to, um, with the boot to speed, he's just going to fly up. And he's as he's running, he's drawing his rapier. Um, and he's going to booming blade. Okay. Her. I think that's... So we'll see... <laughs> That's a hit. Right. It's the booming blade. Do another twelve. Ah. Um. So that's a total of twenty-two piercing and six thunder, and then I will uh, bonus action uh, move back exactly sixty feet to where I was, which I believe was. All right, Tarek, as you cut into her, you see that she took all of it, and she was just not happy with with cutting into her. Okay, good to know. And I, I just yelled out, uh, kill the bitch. <laughs> Beacon, it is your turn. Here and do another Eldritch Blast. Starting her, so fifteen. First one won't hit the first way. That misses. The second one does hit. And she, I, that's the one where she's pushed back, right? Both over any overpowering that hit. So 15. All uh, right. Um, and I'm going to fly up 20 feet and win a healing word onto myself and Thorka. On Thorka, and, okay. Know, so, 10 to be... Oh, is he... Yes, good call. Is it... So, did Thorka healing lay on hands? No, you, you can use that. Instead of hitting me with a hit, James. I wasn't sure <laughs> what you had done when you got. So, yeah. so, onto, onto Tignum. So, onto myself, onto Tignum. Um, because that one, I can do it on the, the guy, right? <laughs> Alright, so where is your healing going? Myself, onto Tignum. Yourself and Tignum. Got it. Alright, so Tignum, you get healed for 10. Alright. The great news is that uh, that means that you don't have to take a death saving throw. You want to make one just for the sanity's sake to see what you would have would have gotten? Alright, you still would have been alive, so there you go. I'd rather not gamble. But it's your turn. 
Yeah, uh, one sec. I, I thought my turn was going to be make a saving throw, so I need to think for a couple seconds. Okay. Um, I am going to... <clears throat> Try to read this spell without casting it. Holy shit. Alright. I am going to cast Heroism on myself. Okay. So I will gain nine temporary hit points. Sounds good. And uh, with my bonus action, I can't do shit because all my constructs are dead, you asshole. Um, <laughs> with my bonus action, I will weep softly to myself. All right. At the end of your turn, um, Bulwark does that does that thing in the Terminator where he just melts into the lava and his thumbs stick it up and he just is goo. Um, that's it. Did he do the thumb up? Yeah. And then Jabu, it's your turn. Alright. Um. Alright, from where I am, I'm gonna hit her with a fireball. Okay. Um, use my sorcerer point to make it a. Uh... Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna use three, and I'm gonna. Like... Yeah, three, and I'm gonna force sorcerer. No. Yep, three out of my four sorcerer points left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quicken the fireball and change it into ice. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I accidentally cast heroism at second level, so I guess I'm targeting Thorka with it as well. All right. Yeah, if you want to do that, it's fine. Uh, Jabu. Oh, yeah, I got to roll. Yeah. I keep forget. Oh! Oh, I'll take well, half. All right, you take uh, what? Thirteen ice. Thirteen ice. Um. All right. So then, what I'll do now is <clears throat> so I'll shoot her with uh, ray of frost. Okay. That will hit. Uh, she's medium correct yes okay so then fury of the small so I'll take 13 and i'll use my last last point i'll try no i'm just only shooting with ice so yes yeah, so never mind so 13 ice damage all right she takes it she looks very battered and my turn's over oh uh she loses 10 10 of her movement until next turn. Okay. Well, my next turn. Uh, I'm done. She... She looks at you. And she looks at everyone. And says... <clears throat> I'm immortal. Can't kill me. With your primitive weapons. <laughs> and she takes her hand, her pointer on her finger, and she points it at Tignum and says, Are you ready? Are you ready to enjoy this? Because I'll enjoy this. I do not consent. And she casts Magic Missile. Oh, hold on. Hold 
holding. I'm holding too. I cast shield. I take no damage from magic missile. As the magic missile flies towards you, Tignum, you react just in time as the shield blocks the missiles entirely. Holy shit, I'm so glad I have all this shit on my armor. You hear her say, No! Because you're Iron Man. Yeah, and I see her shoot magic missiles at me and I go, Oh shit! And I slam a button on my chest and a force field projects out and blocks the missiles. From there, Thorka, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Thorka runs across this bridge and goes just charges right at her to attack. And he is going to launch his sword at her in two attacks. Okay. Alright, so first 25 hits. That will hit. And the second one does 18 hit. That will hit as well. Okay. So uh, he's throwing uh, second level smite at both of those attacks. Okay. So this is the first one. She takes 40 points of damage. Okay. And then the second one, she takes 42 points of damage, so 82 points of damage altogether. Thorka, when your weapon swings down, how would you like to kill her? Whoa. Yes! Oh, uh, just slice off her head. As your weapon starts to get into her neck, you can see her smiling, and she mouths something. You recognize it as thank you. Her head comes clean off and flies into the lava. The head just melts and her body dissipates into nothingness. Uh, Thork is not, but Lewis is petty, and he's going to roll the other 4d6 that he forgot to roll, so <laughs> it was another 12 points of damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to broom on petty. over to the sword. Uh, can I... Oh, uh, I was gonna... There was no remains to get of, um, Dega? I didn't delete it. Um, there was remains. Would I be able to get them? Oh, Jesus, I assume. Yeah, that. definitely search that body. Terminator thumb thing meant... Yeah. That was Terminator thumb thing for, for, uh, for the, uh, the Robot. steel defender. Because the steel defender is melted into a crisp. God, we can oh. rebuild him. We have the technology. <laughs> I like take rope out and stuff, and I just trying to get you'll, I can of Dega's out. You'll really need to be able to fly in order to go ahead and grab him. Uh, if it, the the was, was over there, so if, there was a, if there was body to have gotten, he would have done that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Beacon's um, dead body will be next to you. It's it's crispy. Let me just uh, give me a second. I'm gonna put him. Yeah. Oh, I can do it. I'm really glad I didn't give Daga my shit before we came here. <laughs> and Tignum, as you reach out for the weapon, uh, you you seem to be able to uh, grab it. All right, I'm going a, I'm to a look into what it is later. Okay. Hmm. Need help moving to, to the guy. Yeah, I, I, I'll carry... Uh, oh, whatever, uh, I don't know how much is up for um, I should be able to still manage him if you'd like to just balance him while I um, hold the weight. And then we can um, ease him out of here together. Or I'll fly back with my broom and we can hoist him out using the broom and some rope. There you go. So I will help uh, fasten him carefully and gently onto the broom. As you as you move to Ga, he seems to, like, more pieces of himself seem to fall off. 
um, just from being completely burnt to a crisp for multiple seconds inside of the lava. Uh, he, he really, if you, if you try to move him maybe more than 20 or 30 feet, he's probably going to come apart. Hey, Ted, I have a question. Yes. Is Degas corpse at this point now considered an object? No. All right. I guess I won't cast mending then. No, I don't think that would work. <laughs> I just um, want to hold the arm on. <laughs> uh, Beacon, can we? It is up to you. Can we? We have large bags. If we can put him in there just to make it so we don't lose any of him. To bring True out. at this point. True at this point. The answer we, is resurrection. We also Ooh. could use. We could try. Tignum's device. It saved him before. Does it regenerate the missing parts of his body, though? Hey, it, it reattached his head. I never tested that use case, but I have to say I, 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 I stand by my inventions. It reattached his head. Why, you know, why not, you know, do it? Other than that, remember what, uh, we, we will not be able to just resurrect him here. No, we could, the, uh, there are clerics of Asmodeus. An employee of Mahadi. But didn't he, you know, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he say he would not, they would not ha do that for us? Not included in the contract. We have to pay them. If we can pay them. It's up yeah. to you. You can use, use, you can either use the, the device or you can take them. I, you know? I still have a stillborn Roa egg bathed in mana. If we hook up the device to that, maybe we can use what's left of its life essence, and maybe it won't do anything, but maybe it will. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know, you weren't there. But Thorkus well, yeah. should know. But you're talking to me. <laughs> no, I was talking to the both of you, which includes Thorka. Stillborn what? A stillborn Roa egg bathed in mana. We bought it at an auction a while ago. It's what I made my backpack with. It's it's a magical balancing act between that twilight, between life and death. So I'm saying I, I used it to make a battery before for my backpack. If we hook it up to the defibrillator, maybe it'll have enough kick. Although I think it would probably turn my egg to dust. It might give us a better chance. It'll give it more energy, and it might give us a better chance in bringing a, in, in being successful. But you have to make that choice. Use the, the machine, or we, we, you take them to Mahdi and see what he can do. And then he said we can. Well, at least we're going to eat good tonight, huh? Well, n well, at whatever body serves us, yes. Um, so we have to make this, you know, do we have to make this choice now or can we get out of here? I think the idea is his body is too charred to move. Well, if they we, need pieces of it to be resurrected. I don't think so, no. We, we can put him in bags so we don't lose any of him and then get him out of here. Where are you? Where are you gonna take him? Uh, At least just out of here, and then be, it, again, the decision's up to Beacon. I, you know, it's not up to me. He was your man. He was our, our friend. But oh, Tarek, what, Tarek walks up and he grabs the patented bonafide Tignum guaranteed resuscitator, and he activates the device on what's left of Dega. There you go. Let's see how it works. I would have hooked up the egg first, but all right. Yeah, I, I think that you're better getting it. You may you made the point about rolling dice. As you use the defibrillator, it doesn't seem to have enough juice, Tarek. And the idea that Tignum had seems to like be kind of refracting in your head, and it seems to start getting to be a better idea. Catch the egg. All right, I kneel down. I take the egg out of my backpack. I grab a couple of copper tubes. I'm sorry, copper cables and some vacuum tubes, and I hook them up to the uh, 
end of the defibrillator and I cross my fingers. I pull my goggles down over my eyes first, though. All right. I need a 1D100 to be rolled. It is still a 50-50 chance, but it is possible because of the egg. My, my roll? It's whatever the first roll comes up as. Okay. You hear the energy pulse, and you see the egg just evaporate as the energy is being used by the resuscitator. The resuscitator seems to kick, and you've never seen the resuscitator kick before. Tignum has a worrying look in his eye. The resuscitator pulses, and you just see all of the parts of Degas' body turn into dust and just blow away in the wind. No! Oh, I was muted. Sorry. No. Oh. I kind of look at I look at Beacon and I'm like, I mean, I I it, Tarek, you know, just doesn't have anything to say. He just keeps like sh shrugging his his shoulders and kind of looking at the ground. And he just Beacon. mutters, it happens. Beacon, your passive insight reminds you that Mahadi did say that for the right price, a true resurrection could be cast. But you're not sure what that right price could be. Well, if you can reach down... I guess and pick up the holy symbol that the, uh, the God would wear of Muhammad. And we can go turn to his friends here, I guess. We'll see Jabu across the way, and I guess we could, I think we could get maybe Jabu, if we can get Jabu, we can go back to the Emporium. I, uh, need to figure yeah, out. Uh, hey, Num, can you go and get, um, Jabu on the, uh, with your broom and bring him over here and we can get out of here? Yeah, I'll send the broom to go pick him up. Thank you. Uh, then while that's going on, uh, Thorka will say, uh, not a silent prayer, but a, uh, you know, a prayer to Thor. Uh, to protect this warrior on his passing, because he fought bravely today. Let me know when you break it. And, uh, so we. Up... I was gonna say, let me know when you uh, hit the thing, so I'll, I'll then I'll shift you back to the next map. Okay, so once we're all together, uh, Thorka does pick up some. Is there some still ash on the floor, or is it all blown away? It's pretty much all blown away. There'll be very little ash left. You could definitely okay. pick some up, but I whatever I can, I try to pick it up and put it inside of no, a it's... small satchel. I have a um, pile. You can put it in my pile. I, I, I try to made, collect... I'll put the pot in a pile. Yeah, we can, we can um, enchant the them together. Pile, I put it in there. Put it in my satchel for now, and then once we're all together, I squeeze the uh, the sponge like uh, object. As you squeeze the sponge, you all come back to the Emporium. Mm. Now that we're out of the hellhole, well, that hellhole, I would like to uh, analyze that sword. All right. 
I sent I sent a pass to the pocket dimension. Okay. Tegnum, as you look at the sword, you analyze it, you realize how powerful this sword is. Uh, this looks like to be a Vorpal blade. A Vorpal scimitar. How's the sword look, uh, Tignum? Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. Eric says, I, I think we need to go and, uh, I don't know, have a drink. I mean, we, we have time. Take your time with it and just kind of come, you know, once you figured it out, come let us know. I mean, uh. And the only place to get a drink in this area is going to be the bottom left where all the food foodstuffs are located. If, um, if I drink out of the, the flask of plenty, does it still taste like... It like tastes bad? awful, yes. Right. So Tarek, um, Tarek he, 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 he just he takes it, he drinks some of the flask and... Uh, he pours a little of it out for, uh, for his fallen sailor. Sort of. um, Thorker will do the same thing with his uh, his uh, mead pouch. Drink it anyway, even though it tastes rancid, and then put it down. Uh, and then looks over Jabu. Jabu, go and tell uh, the pawn store uh, uh, clerk that uh, the job was completed. I somehow have a lower to hit with this than I do with my hand axe. You're probably not proficient in scimitars. I am. Oh, is it an exotic weapon? It, it's it's a martial. I believe it's a martial. Okay, so I'm weapon, proficient. So with, I'm proficient with martial weapons. It gives a plus three, and mm -hmm. I should be using my int instead of my strength to wield it. So it should be two higher than my hammer, my hand axe, because my oh, hand axe is a plus one. You can override the things that makes well, it easier. Does that, does that make sense to you guys, or am I missing something? It probably doesn't take into account the end override. You also have to be attuned to it. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. There you go. That's probably it. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing well. I see that you've finished, and I, I can feel that you're done. You did a great job. You know, I don't feel like we did. There's a lot of, bit, lot, of, lot of motion down in that super cave. I'll tell you right now. Well, you know, you, it is what it is at the end of the day, you know. Um, mm. Did did you lose someone? Is there something wrong? Oh, well, we lost someone who's been with us for a while now. And on top of that, that girl was, she didn't want to fight at all. Hmm. Well, I, I, I can't, I can't talk about that, but, uh, you well, know, it, I, I, I cannot say it is, uh, just not part of my contract to be able to talk about it. Uh, what, what are you trying to say? The long story short is, is that, uh, I can't really talk about what you dealt with, but, uh, I can pay you for your services and I really appreciate it. Uh, Jabu gets really heated. Uh, seeing the death of the, the two deaths and that, that, that young girl's death and everything, and he's just so confused. And we all know how Jabu doesn't really think before he acts. 
and he reaches, he just jumps up to grab your shirt collar. Kaboom. It's in the contract. You need to talk to Mahadi if you want to talk about that. Well, then go get him then. I want to talk to him now. Or I'm <laughs> going to rip your head off. You can call him. He will come. The demon snaps his fingers three times. <clears throat> and as he snaps his fingers, he appears above you. He lets him go and turns right to Mahadi and steps up to him. You didn't tell us. You sent us in there, and you didn't tell us that the that they're, they're slaves. Good or evil, evil or good, it's all the same. It's how life works sometimes. And I'm sorry that you lost someone. Unfortunately, we don't. I don't have any way to um, to to fight them. And you, you, you are a blessing in disguise. You have been doing very good work for Asmodeus and for myself, and we appreciate that. Now, now we have a way, a way to bring your friend back if you're interested. You just let me know, and uh, we'll we'll work out the details. You know what? To, let me guess. I gotta go do something for you first. No, no, not at all. It's actually very simple. Then what we got to do? Uh, one of you has to give me their soul. We'll sign a contract, and the payment will be to resurrect your friend. That's it. You tell me, Mahadi, because he died here, he was not struck with a hellfire weapon. He boiled in magma. Is, is, is he going to be transformed into a demon? If you want the truth, no. No, we, we don't have a soul. His soul is wandering the, the second plane of hell. But, I mean, his soul is wandering the second plane of hell. So this is where he will reside for all eternity. He won't be transformed into a demon. But, you know, I mean, it's. I feel that that's, that's not a very fun place to be. And he kind of strokes his uh, his beard. So it is up to you, you know. I I can, we can I can get a a priest uh, here from Asmodeus and one of my one of his loyal priest followers, and he will bring him back, and it, it will be like it's never happened. This is the dumbest thing I ever heard. I need to think. Well, the offer is always going to be onto the table, you know? And he snaps his fingers, and you see a uh, table appear right in between you and him. A small table with a, with a scroll on it that seems to have a list of terms and conditions. Just like before except it talks about resurrecting your friend and bringing him back. Can I take this to review? Well, I can't let you keep it, but, I mean, if you want to stand here and, and read it for a bit, I assure you it's just as ironclad as the other. I don't have any reason to trick someone who can who has true sight. I, I think that I would be silly. You. I just need to... Think on what the god might want. Aye, that is not a problem. If you if you prefer, you can you can talk to me. Uh, you can talk to me before we get to our next place, and uh, and we can make a decision on that. Uh, or if any of you, if any of you want to give your soul away to for for this uh, for this turtle. Then any of you. I don't need your soul beacon. Any of you can give me their soul. 
this little goblin. You feel so passionate, you can give me your soul. Tarek, Tarek, I, it, you know, it, it's, it might be the easiest way to get down here. You know? <laughs> Tarek's already walked away and is not even entertaining the idea. Thorka, if you give me your soul, then then the curse will be gone anyway, you know, and then you'll get one of your friends back. So, it is there on the table. I hate this place. This is the worst place in the world. I believe we are over 15 coins, and I apologize for Jeff getting rough with your pawn shop salesman we deal with passion all the time it is not a problem at all he snaps his fingers and the bag of coins uh is on the floor right here the 15 coins you may take that and uh you're all set you know if you need anything else from me please let me know um and i tell you what a round a round of my finest wine for everyone to to you know, to to hope for better times. How about that? How about that? Hmm. Appreciations. I think Tarek reminded you. Wait a second. Hold on. Oh, oh. I'm tired of the disrespect we keep getting in this place here now. I might be a little slow, but I'm not dumb. Can't you hand that to him like a man? You just throw it on the floor? No, he's respecting me because I don't want to touch it, actually. And in fact, I don't think I would be well able to carry that many. He grabs it from the floor after after you say that. And he goes, here you go. If you want to take it, Jabu, no problem. And he, oh. he, he hands out the 15-coin uh, bag. I just take it from... I think you should be up. All right, put that. Thank you for defending my honor, Jabu. It's okay. He don't treat you like that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and we'll take your fine wine, please. Uh, no problem. So he um, he snaps his fingers, and the and the wine is there. Um, Jabu, you feel amazingly awful. Um, you're carrying this, and you just feel like all of these coins are kind of slowly talking to you um giving you whispers of maniacal things and you're getting just kind of like really worked up and he just seems to misty step over and then he snaps his fingers and thorka and um <clears throat> thorka and Tarek, you both have uh this 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 uh cup of fine wine that's floating in front of you. Uh, Thorka just quaffs it in one shot. Yeah, absolutely grab it and then knock it back. And both of you feel like it's, thank god, it tastes like something that's not uh, bile. It just tastes amazing. Uh, Jabu, again, the once you get closer and beacon, uh, there's a there's a glass of fine wine that's kind of floating in front of you. I uh, I actually don't. I kind of push past the floating wine without touching it, and mm -hmm. I kind of ignore it because of the way I feel at the moment. And I walk over to Thorka and Tark. I drop the uh, the bag on the floor in front of them. Not like, I just drop it because I can't hold it no more. And I just feel so queasy and I just say, I can't hold that bag no more. I hear voices in my head when I hold it. Mm. I call a payment, but it feels terrible. All this, so Tarek, I, I, don't want, I don't want to be here no more. Tarek, can you hold this like the other one? I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It might be too much yeah, for me. Know. I mean, I'll pick up the bag, but I think it's going to be a bit much. And it's this, and it's the same thing. Uh, Tarek, you just start hearing those voices. Oh. We have an issue now. Oh, no. <laughs> so what, uh, what if we split it in half between me and Jabu? 
you're still going to hear the voices. Uh, basically, uh, out of game wise, if you're carrying more coins greater than your constitution modifier, you're going to hear those voices. Oh, sure. I have four coins of this. None. Well, split, just, I guess just split them up between maybe uh, tear, grab some, Jabu, uh, grab some, and then uh, Tignum can maybe hold some. Uh, I can't hold any more because I have some already, and I feel that any more would uh, push me over the edge. Um, the the uh, other option is, is is we either spend or mm. I mean I don't know exactly where we're like staying is is drop them off at whatever. You're yeah. staying so yeah so you're staying in one of the uh, in one of the machines that are here so you can drop it off in one of the machines um, when you go inside all of you are staying there. Um, so you can just drop it off there and you won't incur any penalty for doing that. So. Whatever you have storage. Probably Is there a place we can stay with for a little rest? Yeah. Uh, the, the machine that you have is this one, which is next to the weapons and armory shop. Uh, so anytime you go in there, you take a long rest. Um, I don't have a physical representation of that, but it's, it's roomy, comfortable, and, uh, nice. That's where I'm gonna lie down because my character's uh, he's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I pat Jabu, you know, on the back and just let him, you know, go and get some sleep. Mahadi is, and Mahadi is gonna snap his fingers and then say, <laughs> "Good luck." And we'll get to our next destination next week. And he disappears from there the session is over Whoa. Cool. I hope you guys had a lot of fun um, Beacon let me know uh, all of you can let me know if you decide to take his choice in what he does uh, let me know, and then we will see if Daga comes back next week. Uh, that being said, um, other than that, you guys level to level 7. Oh, wow. Awesome. Oh, shit. Yeah, so, like, Ted, that was, from mm -hmm. from, uh, from my point of view, of, as, a, as another DM, that was, that was an awesome fight. <laughs> that was great use of terrain. Um, and like the spells that she was using, it was that was a, that was a really uh, cool um, boss battle. Yeah, very very scary. Yeah, that was a scary boss battle because <laughs> like no one was doing well in that situation. Yeah, and I saw I saw um, to a point where I saw all of you kind of bunch up. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, this is going to be the worst thunder wave. And then the thunder wave happened. And I was like, all right, at least the guy who can do the killing blow um, <laughs> didn't get pushed into the lava. Um, and then, and then you know, and then we went from there. Um, she was... A modified character, obviously a spellcaster. I'm trying to look her up now because I'm gonna need her for the video. Um, she was a. I was looking through all the challenge rating monsters and everything like that, and um, she was a modified spellcaster, uh, Vizarin Devere from Out of the Abyss, and uh, she is an 18th level spellcaster. So yeah, wow. she's she's pretty nasty. Uh, I did not have her have the invisibility at will because I felt that that would have been a little too brutal. Uh, so instead, I nerfed her on some respects and buffed her on others. Um, and yeah, so there you go. So um, I'm gonna turn off the stream now. Thank you everyone for watching the stream. We're gonna have the replay of this on tomorrow because it definitely looks like there's gonna be a snow day tomorrow, so I have plenty of time. Um, and then we'll I'll record the uh, behind the DM screen 
tomorrow, which will be a really interesting one. And then I'm going to upload it probably the next day. So it'll be uploaded on Friday. So thank you very much. Uh, we're going to talk out of game now. Uh, thank you for coming, and uh, we will see you next week. So long.